Call the meeting to order. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for your patience, everyone. And uh, we welcome our two new board members, Mr. Richard Walner and Mrs. Leanne Gonzalez. And we look forward to working with you both yeah. um, on everything we've been working on and all of your initiatives, too. So we will begin with, let's just, just get the minutes out of the way. Madam Chair, I move to approve the May 6, 2019 regular session mitten, minutes. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. We, two we abstain. Yeah. They weren't here for that meeting. So, okay. Who? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Rich yes, and Leanne, yeah. yeah. So you write, write that on. I did. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Next order of business. Minutes of the reorganization meeting. Madam Chair, I move to approve the May 8, 2019 reorganization meeting minutes as written. Motion, do I have a second? second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That one's unanimous. Do we have anyone here for public comment? Nobody's here for public comment. Next order of business is signing bans and bonds. Um, Madam Chair, did you want to take up board member reports? Or are we looking to? Well, what are we? Madam Chair, I don't mind if you uh, skip around for people who wait here. Because we were waiting, but if, if anyone feels compelled to speak, board members, or otherwise, can we handle that at the end? We can handle bonds at the end. If that's all right with you, can we move on? Or do you want me to skip over bans and bonds as well? well the treasurer is here this evening. I don't know if we want to take that, that vote. She wouldn't otherwise be, be staying through the Warren article hearing. Right. Yeah, let's move on to that. Madam Chair, I move. It's a big one. It's a long one. <laughs> I'm going to put my glasses on. <laughs> Madam Chair, I move that the board take the following actions. Voted that the sale of the $2 million, general obligation municipal purpose loan of 2019, bonds of the town dated May 30th, 2019, to Fidelity Capital Markets, a division of National Financial Services, LLC, at the price of $2,748,844.16. An accrued interest, if any, is hereby approved and confirmed. The bonds shall be payable on May 15th of the years and in the principal amounts and bear interest at the respective rates as follows. As noted in the motion, year two. 2020 to 2039. Further voted to approve the sale of 7172077 general obligation bond anticipation notes of the town dated May 30th, 2019, payable May 28th, 2020. To Jeffries LLC at par and accrued interest, if any, plus a premium of 27,327. Further voted that in connection with the marketing and sale of the bonds, the preparation and distribution of a notice of sale and prelimi preliminary official statement dated May 8th, 2019, and a final official statement dated May 16th, 2019, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. Further voted that in connection with the marketing and sale of the notes, the preparation and distribution of a notice of sale and prelim preliminary official statement dated May 8th, 2019, and a final official statement dated May 16th, 2019, each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby are ratified, confirmed, and approved and adopted. Further voted that the bonds shall be subject to redemption at the option of the town upon such terms and conditions as are set forth in the official statement. 
Further voted that the town treasurer and the select board be and hereby are authorized to execute and deliver continuing and significant events, disclosure, undertakings, and compliance with section rule 15C2-12 in such forms as may be approved by bond council to the town, which undertakings shall be incorporated by reference in the bonds and notes as applicable for the benefit of the holders of the bonds and notes from time to time. Further voted that we authorize and direct the town treasurer to establish post issuance federal tax compliance procedures and continuing disclosure procedures in such forms as the town treasurer and bond council deem sufficient or if such procedures are currently in place to review and update said procedures in order to monitor and maintain the tax exempt status of the bonds and notes and to comply with relevant securities laws. Further voted that each member of the select board, the town clerk, and the town treasurer be and hereby are authorized to take any and all such actions and execute and deliver such certificates, receipts, or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary or convenient to carry into the effect the provisions of the foregoing votes. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion. Could you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> Have the treasurer here, Mr. Gilberto. Just you want to add to that? Um, no, I mean the mo the motion describes the approval for the borrowing that's taking place. Uh, I would note that it's two components. One is long-term um, bonding that's taking place, and one is for short-term bond anticipation notes, which is customarily what happens when we go through um, these actions. Um, I'll be speaking later on relative to Moody's assignment of a rating relative to the town's credit uh, during the TA report. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Moving. Well, well done, Mrs. Moving, <laughs> moving <laughs> along. And Madam Chair, through you. Thank you. Thank you. Just as a summary, the bond anticipation notes total just over seven million dollars, and the bonds themselves totaled uh, nearly two point seven million dollars in borrowing. Thank you. Madam Chair, I move to proclaim the month of May. Just one minute. Okay. Mr. Yeah, I just oh. threw you, Madam Chair, to the town treasurer. Can the board sign this at the conclusion of the meeting and provide it to you? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. You're going to be Great. with us anyway, right? Excuse me? You'll be with us anyway. She, she won't be with us. But oh, you will yeah. not be with us. The finance director Thank will you. be with us. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Can we move on to the next? <laughs> Madam Chair, I move to proclaim the month of May 2019 as Older Americans Month and to sign the proclamation. And the, well, if we should, could you, you want to read the proclamation a, first? Well, I have a motion. Do I have a second? And then we can I'll read second. it. Second. All right. Would you please read the proclamation? Yes, from the O'Leary Senior Center. Older Americans Month 2019, a proclamation. Whereas the town of North Reading includes a growing number of older Americans who enrich our community through their diverse life experiences, and whereas the town of North Reading and the O'Leary Senior Center is committed to strengthening our community by connecting with and supporting older adults, their families, and caregivers, and acknowledge their many valuable contributions to society, and whereas the town of North Reading and the O'Leary Senior Center recognizes the importance of bringing together all generations and engaging in activities that promote physical, mental, and emotional well-being for the benefit of all, and whereas the Town of North Reading and the O'Leary Senior Center can enhance the lives of older Americans in our community by promoting home and community-based services that support independent living, by involving older adults in community events and other activities, and providing opportunities for older adults to work, volunteer, learn, lead, and mentor. Now, therefore, the Select Board of the Town of North Reading do hereby proclaim May 2019 to be Older Americans Month. We urge every resident to take time during this month to recognize older adults and the people who serve them as essential and valuable men members of the community. Dated this 20th day of May 2019, and it would be survived. It will, would be signed by our chair, Catherine Mandy Pelly. So, motion, second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 
And we have Mrs. Perney joining us, our Elder Services Director, who would like to say oh, a few words. I would words. just like to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you. Th thank you for honoring our older residents in North Reading. I thank you all, not only for being the Elder Affairs Director, but being an older American woman myself. <laughs> so thank you for doing that. Some other folks were going to join me here tonight, but the Friends of the Council of Aging are holding the annual free tomato workshop this evening. And you know free will always override a night with the select board meeting. So I apologize play? for that, but I'm going to the <laughs> meeting myself in a few minutes. Um, connect, create, and contribute is this year's theme of this year's celebration of Older Americans Month. I'm happy to say that all of those are happening every day at the O'Leary Senior Center. I'm also pleased to say the town's commitment to make North Reading an age-friendly community means age-friendly for all ages is moving forward every day. We're planning our first event this August at our National Night Out with the COA board and our SSA team members uh, to host an informative table and hopefully find more residents in the community who want to connect to the community, create a future community, and contribute their time to make North Reading a better place to live that it is now for all ages. So thank you for doing this tonight. We look forward to the, uh, our commitment of going forward for an age-friendly commitment, and we, I'm sure we're all gonna help us out, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Comments, anyone? Mary, thanks for everything you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna get some tomatoes. Oh, yeah. Tomatoes, yes. <laughs> yes. You can bring some back. I'll bring some back. Yeah, I promise not to ask any questions. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Mary. Great. Tell <laughs> Hugo to save me some. Excellent. <laughs> all right, next order of business. St. Teresa's Church, one day alcohol license. Patience is a virtue. Thank you for waiting. So go ahead. Madam Chair, I move to grant a one day wine and malt beverage license to St. Teresa's Church for an event to be held at 63 Winter Street on June 21st, 2019, between the hours of 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Second. Motion and second. Do you want to just come up and talk a little bit about what the event is? If you want to come to the microphone and explain that. Hi. Um, Hi it's a Could you, would you state your name? Oh, Carol Hudson, and um, representing St. Teresa's. And it's a uh, family affair. It's on the longest day of the month. The bishop wanted a family get together. It's not a fundraiser. It's going to have, so you all can come. Bring your kids, grandkids, whatever you have, and it's $10 a person, $30 per family, uh, no matter how many people are in the family. They have an, uh, oh, a popcorn machine. They're, it's catered by the Horseshoe. Uh, they're gonna have a barbecue with all the fixings um, and desserts. They're having Richie's ice cream, popcorn. They're having uh, cotton candy, games for the kids, cornhole for the adults. So it's just an all day, uh, an evening thing to get everybody together. It's not just for St. Teresa's parishioners, it's for the, anyone that, who would like to come. And since it's catered by Horseshoe, they'll have an experienced server, server. serving the alcohol. Okay. Correct. Board members have any questions? Any more questions? Yeah, okay. have a motion, a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Unanimous. Thank awesome. you. Thank you all so much. Okay, our next item on the agenda is our 7.45 p.m. meeting with the CPC for a joint appointment to the Economic Development Committee. I'll start so I didn't pass it. Okay, go ahead. Madam Chair, I move to jointly appoint Michael A. Prisco as associate member to the Economic Development Committee for a term to expire May 20th, 2022. Second. So we have, <laughs> yes, the EDC, so we'll vote first and then you'll vote. Okay, so Mr. O'Leary, uh, any discussion on the motion? Mr. O'Leary? Uh, Mr. Prisco. Mr. Walner? Mr. Prisco. Mr. Schultz? Mr. Prisco. Ms. Gonzalez? Mr. Prisco. And the chair votes Mr. Prisco, CPC. And uh, from our board, uh, Mr. Hayden? Mr. Prisco. Okay. Okay. Unanimously appoint to Mr. Frisco. Thank you for hanging around too. Next order of business is the street acceptance, Little Meadow Way. Baptism by fire. 
Madam Chair, I move to accept the layout of Little Metal Way as shown on a plan entitled Street Acceptance Plan, Bradford Pond Estates, Little Metal Way in North Reading, Mass., dated December 31st, 2018, and a plan entitled Roadway as Built Plan, Bradford Pond Estates, Little Meadow Way in North Reading, Mass., by signing said plan and reporting to the town. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Was that Mr. O'Leary? Yeah. Mr. O'Leary. Oh, you were just. No, that was me. No discussion? I, I just don't it's fully common. understand the issues. So. I don't either. I mean, but it could briefly. Mr. Gilberto. Thank it's, you. Can um, you direct us to the page that it's in? And the two of you take a look in here. Yeah. I think it'll help I did explain try to it. Over, so. Sure. 47. 47? Sorry, I'm having a technical difficulty with downloading the packet Lord, here to that page. page. Oh. Again. Welcome to my world. Yes, <laughs> a little bit of that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Far, far away. So if you're uh, looking on uh, page 40, 45 of the meeting packet, there is a, uh, a, a report to the town relative to the laying out of the way. And basically this was a, a public, uh, excuse me, this is a, a road that was constructed in conjunction with a subdivision. Um, Little Metal Way is the name of the road. And uh, the construction project, while it date ba dates back a number of years, um, we're at a point where the last two house lots are under construction simultaneously, I believe, right, Danielle? Um, and then uh, the road has been constructed to our standards to be accepted as a public way. That can only occur um, after the select board has a hearing, notifies the residents and takes a vote to accept the road and then brings it to town meeting. So it's on the warrant for action by town meeting to accept it as well. And you'll see that come up in the next agenda item when we go through the listing of warrant articles. So we've mailed a notice to the abutters because basically what will happen is we'll be taking an interest in property that right now is um, in front of their home and is private property. We're seeking to make it public property. I don't believe that there's anyone here to object to that and it's rare when we go through this type of street acceptance that we have objection to it because we're going to be committing to maintain it um, you know, moving forward including potentially repaving it when that time comes there was a bit of a, a delay with regard to a report of the Planning Commission because of some concern over the water services so that's the pipes connecting the water main that's underground in the street to the homes themselves uh, the water superintendent was out there last week with his staff uh, they are satisfied that uh, any adjustments that needed to be made to those connections have occurred so the department is satisfied that the road can be recommended for acceptance if the board were to vote favorably on the motion tonight that's pending before it um, this would be brought to town meeting with a favorable recommendation of the select board for town meeting to then vote to accept the road. It would then become public, uh, a public way, public road um, uh, of the town of North Reading. We would go to the Registry of Deeds and record a taking of the property. It's a friendly taking. Um, and um, we would become responsible for the road. We would also be eligible for reimbursement from the state from uh, state funds known as Chapter 90 funding for the maintenance of the road on an annual basis. Thank you. And for the record, Madam Chair, I, I have been following along in the packet. It's just when we got to this page, it wouldn't <laughs> upload. I don't want people to think I'm not following along. Don't worry about it. <laughs> sure. These are <laughs> such exciting meetings. So, um, and our town engineer has recommended the acceptance. It's in the packet, and the CPC has recommended acceptance. That's in the packet as well. So, any other, any further discussion? CPC, were you going to sign it tonight? Is that what the they, they have signed? signed it. It. Chair, yeah, we, we have we voted to endorse, but we will subsequent to this meeting. So you can vote to endorse it, endorse it, and then we will vote to endorse it, and we'll endorse it as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any, any other questions? Okay. So I have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. And I have, I don't know if anyone in favor or opposed in the room, right? Do we need to do that? or? I could ask for, for, for comment. I mean, does any, comment. is anyone here to speak? Either for or against the acceptance. I'm just here to listen. I'm arrested. Okay. So and you're in favor of it. You're doing great. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> all right. So hearing none, then we'll move on to a vote. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Do we have to sign the Mylar warrant? Yeah, you can. Uh, we have 
There's three sh there's three sheets yeah. to this plan. It's only one one copy one. that you need to sign. Sign. You want to just walk up and do it? Be yeah, easy. Be yeah. Great. yeah. Just just spread it out. Okay. All right. I know. I thought I'm way behind. So, but this is new to me too. So that's why I'm doing great. Don't sign on the CDC. All right. We'll take a. Uh, a signature. Sorry. Yes, please. Take up, uh, again, I don't know if Bob wants to hang around or not, but maybe uh, number 14 before we get into this. I mean, we're already. I, mean, I know we're he's. All, we're, we're already. I know he may be hanging Can around. We do that? But he doesn't yes. have to anymore. I think that's a great suggestion. Can we just skip to number 14? And then we'll start. Article 14? Yes, uh, yes, please. No, no, number five. Well, I don't think there's a motion for that. Yeah, these are the articles. Um, I don't think we have a motion for that, but I think it's just a no, discussion. No. Oh, all right. Yeah. So we're just going to quickly, briefly take up the net, uh, number 14 on the agenda. We're going a little bit out, out of order tonight. So we have Mr. Robert Mosseri, who needs no introduction. And because he's been actively involved in the, the um, negotiations with select member O'Leary, we wanted to keep him on board as the citizen advisor for the team which is going to be doing the wastewater negotiations with the Andover, which is now going to be from the board, select member O'Leary and select member Schultz. But because he has this, you know, wealth of institutional knowledge and has been actively working on this for now several years and uh, assisted and ush assisted with Mr. O'Leary in ushering in the water contract. We wanted to keep him on board in terms of of the sewer piece of this that's enacted. Well, there's still a little more water issues to, to, to <laughs> solve too, as far as the FEIR being more. filed. And, and again, yes, Mr. Masseri's yeah. been uh, yeah. running roughshod over our consultants and our department heads and uh, the administration to, to move things along. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I think he'd. Uh, be invaluable if he's willing to serve, and he said he is willing to right. serve and continue to serve in this capacity. I think uh, the the board would be wise to uh, take advantage of his willingness to uh, continue on with these issues as a citizen advisor, and be able to participate. So there's no there's no official motion in the packet, but I, I think we we would want to appoint him in this capacity. I'd like to make a motion to appoint Mr. Mosiri as the citizens advisor to the Water Wastewater Working Group. I'll second that. So. Okay. And Mr. O'Leary's here, and like, Ms. I mean, uh, Mr. Mosseri's here, and as Mr. O'Leary said, he's ab ready, able, and willing to continue on the service. So all those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. You're still with us. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Bob. <laughs> all right. I'd like to thank all the board members for the consideration, and I commit to doing my best to move the water and school program. We know you will. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Masseri. 
So feel free, you can stay as long as you want. <laughs> or as briefly as you'd like. Do we have an like. extra seat? <laughs> no, I don't think I have to stay yet. <laughs> 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 All right, so now we're back to number 11 on the agenda, which is our 8 o'clock hearing, informational hearing on the June 10th, 2019 town meeting. Madam Chair, through you, perhaps to the board's clerk, there is a hearing notice that's in there. Mm -hmm. um, we could probably waive the reading of the listing, but you may wish to read the rest of the hearing notice. But right here. Um, if, you, if it's all right with you, I'll just go ahead and read it. Please do. <laughs> This is a notice of informational hearing. The North Reading Select Board does hereby notify the residents of the town of North Reading that hearings on the following articles contained in the June 10, 2019 annual town meeting warrant will be held Monday, May 20, 2019, 8 p.m., room 14, town hall, and lists of uh, the, all the articles contained in the warrant. These hearings are held pursuant to section 18-25 of chapter 30A of the Massachusetts General Laws, the open meeting law, any interested citizen is welcome to attend and participate in these hearings. Notice of explanation, it is the unanimous desire of the North Reading Select Board to encourage and allow the highest level of public participation in making decisions that affect North Reading. It is our belief that these informational hearings will foster and enable more participation in town government by its citizens. The hearings will also allow the board to make informed and considered recommendations to town meeting. And we sincerely hope that you will join us and have stayed with us for this hearing and attend the annual town meeting on June 10th, 2019 from the members of the select board. Ms. Thank Gilberto. You. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Through you, as has been the custom over the past few years, we've prepared a PowerPoint presentation. And what this presentation really does is uh, provide some detail to the information that's in the warrant the board signed on May 6th, and, uh, which is in production for printing and mailing to um, each uh, resident uh, over the next few weeks in time for the June 10th town meeting. This hearing is intended to be an opportunity for the public to learn more about the warrant and what is expected to be considered by town meeting ahead of town meeting. It is also, of course, concurrently an opportunity for new board members to learn more about each warrant article as well in further detail if you've uh, not been following along uh, already. Um, so with that, I'll go through the presentation. The first article, as is the custom, is in the opportunity for amendments to the fiscal year 2019 budget. Right now, we are forecasting three amendments that need to be made. One is $40,600 in free cash that's anticipated to be needed to supplement the DPW roof repair project, which was approved in the capital budget um, last June at town meeting. The second is $18,500 from within the water enterprise budget to supplement insurance proceeds, which we have received to replace a uh, water uh, water department vehicle which was lost, uh, was uh, totaled due to a loss that occurred in February. And finally, $253,615.68, uh, which, which closed out to water department return, retained earnings at the end of last fiscal year, which needs to be appropriated into the reserve for ban bond premium in the fiscal year 2019 operating budget. Again, the funding source for that will be water retained earnings. Uh, for a total of three items that we know at this point in time. The board did not make a recommendation to town meeting and generally does not make a recommendation on this article until the evening of, to of town meeting. And that allows us to ensure that if there's any other issues that come up between now and then, we can consider. And I've incorporated it, or I thank the finance director for incorporating into this presentation um, the motions and the board members who have been identified to make the, um, the uh, motion for each warrant article. So if you look along, you'll see motion by with a board member identified in the presentation. Um, and Madam Chair, through you, I'm going to ask the finance director if she would be able to upload the draft of this presentation to the share file folder for the meeting this evening as well for anyone who wishes to follow along more closely than on the screen here. Thank you. And with that, if there aren't any questions, I'll go to the Does next article. Do you have any questions? So, Mr. Walner? We'll have you do that one. Sure. I just read what he did, right? Yeah. And <laughs> so for the board members, we prepare motions for each of the articles. They're reviewed by the involved department, the town clerk, and town council. We provide a book to the board members at the town meeting. You can, you're simply expected to read the motion. 
Depending upon the article, there's generally a, a, an employee, either myself or the finance director for any of the finance issues, who's available to make a presentation if any additional information is required. So you're not expected you to pass the baton. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> With that, I'll go to the second article, Thank which you. is the snow and ice deficit. Good news is that no deficit is projected, and we are projecting to pass over this article. Um, so there will be uh, an opportunity. Uh, there's an opportunity now for a recommendation to be made. Um, the board may wish to vote to recommend to pass over the article. And that's not something that normally we usually provide the board three options, recommend, not recommend or recommend at town meeting. In some scenarios where we have Passover, we, the board opts to make that recommendation, although we don't print it in the warrant as that, in, in that fashion. Madam Chair, I move to recommend passing over Article 2. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I don't think we voted on the first article. So the first, the first article, we're going to wait and take a vote just before the town meeting. Right. So okay. we're not officially going to pass it over right now because we have to wait until additional information is presented. And we, you know, will hopefully recommend, you know, at the town meeting. But as Mr. Gilberto explained, there may be additional items added in there. We don't expect that, but there may be additional items added in there between now and town meeting. The second article, the snow and ice, we don't need, we don't, we're not running in a deficit. We don't need to assign any funds right. to it, so we're passing it over. So, Mr. Walner, you'll present that, and you'll be just presenting that it's a recommendation of the board that we're pass it. Yep. passing it over. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Madam Chair, uh, through you, um, the board, there was a vote called with regard to recommending to pass over Article Did 2? Did I call yes. the vote? Okay. Yeah. It was you. unanimous in favor yeah. of passing over yes. yes. Hilarious. Yes. If, uh, I've actually gone out of order. We intended to start with the warrant article relative to Little Metal Way, so I'm going to skip ahead to that because I know there is somebody who's in the audience here Great. for it, Thanks. and we listed it in that order as well. So I apologize for that oversight. It just seems to be the way this is proceeding all out of order so far. Oh. So that would be part of the course. So the select board has recommended the article. Um, final house construction is underway and finished work um, is uh, being completed with regard to the road. Uh, there is final paving that has occurred to it, so it's not in binder coat. Um, and the board has previously recommended this article. Okay. And that's pretty much the summary of our presentation on that particular article. You said there was someone in there. I please, as a resident, if there's oh, any questions yes. or concerns. I think he left. And Mr. O'Leary, will you? present this on behalf of the board. I hope to be able to handle it capably. <laughs> so we've already voted. Uh, we've already our, recommended We've already that. taken a unanimous vote to recommend that one. I don't have that in here. Is that right? We voted on earlier. You've oh, you okay. previously voted on it, oh, so you don't need to there. vote. Okay. <laughs> All right. So moving right along to number three. Back We're to number three. Number three. I'm getting dizzy over here. Article 3 is a transfer of funds to the town's capital improvement stabilization fund. This article would propose to add $1,012,964 in free cash to the fund, 900000 of which is to be used in the fiscal year 2020 revenue and expense plan. The board has voted with regard to this article previously. However, meeting with the finance director, we're proposing to put the balance of free cash um, in addition to the $900,000. So my recommendation would be to ask the board to re-vote its recommendation this evening. And the motion would be to vote to recommend Article 3. I don't think we had that in the packet. It's not in the okay. packet. It's uh, because that, that changed today. Okay. Recommend Article 3. Motion I, I'll, I'll make a motion to recommend Article 3. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Continuing along to Article 4, which is a transfer of funds to the Water Stabilization Fund. The recommendation is to transfer $512,428 in water enterprise retained earnings to the Water Infrastructure Stabilization Fund. The board had not made a recommendation because we did not have a final number until um, last week. We do have that number, and we prepared a motion for the board to make a recommendation, and we would recommend the board recommend favorably. Do I have a motion on 
Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 4. Article 4, FY 2019, transfer funds to water stabilization fund. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. All those, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving to Article 5, this would propose to transfer $500,000 in free cash to the town's general stabilization fund uh, that was previously recommended by the select board and has also been recommended by the finance committee. Uh, the board does not need to take any action on this article this evening. Thank you. Thank you. If there aren't any questions, I'll go to Article 6, which is a transfer of funds to the other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. We anticipate passing over this article. Um, the select board um, had not made a recommendation so much as the case, as was the case with Article two. 2. Our recommendation would be that the board vote to recommend passing over this article. We do not have a motion presented there, but that would be the motion the board would entertain. I'll make a motion to pass over Article 6. I'll second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. So, M Mr. Walner, article, I have, I, you are on articles one through six. Okay. okay. Thank you. And again, you'll have strategically placed town officials to assist if there's any questions that arise. Yes. Thank right. you. Article Thank you. seven. P politely breathing down your neck. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it'll go more quickly than this, but <laughs> okay. Article, article seven, 7, the transfer of funds to the Solid Waste Stabilization Fund. This is an article in which we transfer any funds anticipated to remain in the stabilization, retain to any funds anticipated to remain in the budget for fiscal year 2019 solid waste costs. So it's basically money that we have raised through fees that we did not need to spend for solid waste um, collection or disposal. We generally transfer it near the end of the fiscal year at June town meeting, the fiscal year ending on June 30th. So this um, is something that we're looking at, $30,000 is the projected number. Um, I believe to, to the finance director through the chair that we settled that $30,000 would be the final number. So the board could vote to recommend Article 7, and I believe there's a motion in there that reflects that. Oh. <laughs> Uh, Madam Chair, I move to recommend Article 7, transfer of funds to Solid Waste Stabilization Fund. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Article 8 would appropriate money for the participating funding arrangement. We do not anticipate making a fiscal year 2019 transfer at this time. We would therefore um, recommend that the board vote to recommend passing over this article. Madam Chair, I, I make a motion to pass over this article. Article 8, appropriate money for a participating fund. Second. A motion, a second, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Article 9. Article 9 is a routine article relative to authorizing the select board to choose routine town officers. We'll correct that slide before town meeting so it reads properly at select board. The board has previously recommended the article and no action is required this evening. Article 10, to hear and act on reports of town <coughs> officers and committees. Um, there um, will be an opportunity where I'll provide some introductions for new employees and there may be any number of boards or committees that may, that may wish to report to town meeting and the moderator has generally entertained requests right up until the start of town meeting or even during the consideration of the article. And there is no need for action by the board at this time because the board previously voted to recommend the article. Article 11 would authorize a DPW director to accept easements. Uh, this provides the ability for the DPW director on behalf of the town to accept easements for uh, drainage or other purposes. Um, the board previously recommended the article and no action is required this evening. 
Article 12 authorizes the treasurer to enter into compensating balance agreements. That allows the town treasurer to enter into agreements with banks through which a portion of the interest earnings of deposits are retained by the bank in exchange for the services rather than the town having to appropriate money and make a direct payment to the bank. The board has previously recommended the, the, recommended the article and no further action is required this evening. So, just one second. So, Select Member Gonzalez, you have Article 6 through 12. Okay. Article 13 authorizes a Chapter 90 construction. We anticipate, rece anticipate receiving $516,073 in fiscal year 2020 from the state. The board's previously recommended. Uh, therefore, no action is required this evening. Article 14 is a prior year bills. Uh, they require a four-fifths uh, vote of town meeting for payment. We do not anticipate any at this point in time. However, we recommend that the board not make a recommendation until the evening of town meeting just to provide a window for anything else to come in um, to be considered. Article 15 is the operating budget. It's voted in two motions uh, with available funds and then debt service. We have a separate presentation that I'm not going to go through this evening. We went through it at a budget hearing in the previous meeting. The board has previously recommended the budget and therefore no action is required uh, this evening. Uh, the Finance Committee was unable to make a recommendation prior to the printing of the warrant. However, my understanding is that they will consider a recommendation the evening of town meeting. Thank you. Article 16, the fiscal year 2020 town capital budget. This was presented to the board on April 22nd and approved by the board that evening. The board's previously recommended the articles, this article, the detailed report including all of the appropriations was printed in the warrant or will be printed in the warrant that will be mailed to each home um, there's a listing here I'm not going to go through uh, each item uh, because it was reviewed ex in an exhaustive fashion um, but uh, it, it matches what was in the warrant that was that's being printed by the printer and mailed to people's homes <coughs> article 17 is to rescind authorizations to borrow um, we are not expecting any action uh, at town meeting. Um, therefore, the board may wish to consider this evening a motion to pass over Article 17. I make a motion to pass over Article 17, rescind authorization to borrow. Second. I have a motion, a second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Article 18 would fund retirement obligations. It's funded through raise and appropriate in the amount of $200,000. The board previously recommended this article, therefore no action is required this evening. Article 19 would transfer funds to our other post-employment benefits liability trust fund. And that is a fund that's been set up for the town to set aside funding to pay the long-term costs associated with health care for its retirees for whom the town is responsible for health care. Um, we propose to transfer in the amount of $300,000 from raise and appropriate. It was factored into our uh, operating budget for fiscal year 2020 and into our revenue and expense plan for that year. The board has previously recommended the article and therefore no action is required this evening. And this is in accordance with a plan that we set up uh, roughly four years ago to dedicate a certain amount of funding each year. Questions? Article 20 appropriates money for permitting software. This is $26,230 that would be free cash to supplement a state grant that we received for permitting software to streamline uh, the conduct of permitting here in the town hall um, with a focus on the building department but also the associated departments. Um, there was a couple of modules that the state was unable to provide grant funding for. This would allow us to secure those as well as to address any staff time needed to implement the project over the next few months. The select board previously recommended the article and therefore no action is required this evening. Article 21 would fund repairs to town buildings. This is one for which detail was not available at the last meeting. Um, we have uh, two proposed projects that are in there. Um, one is for the HVAC system for the library activity room in the amount of $25,000. And the other is for a proposed uh, renovation to accommodate a new position in the administration office for the two new board members. That's a um, grant writer slash, slash project manager that is slated to be in the, in the town administrator's office. 
looking to try to accommodate that within the footprint of the office at this point in time. It does require some uh, work. It also would impact the board in that uh, space in question is the select board's office. Uh, we're hoping to remove the cabinets that are in there. There's some plumbing that's in there that's underutilized as well. Moving some file cabinets as well to try to make the space uh, a little more updated and also uh, accommodate uh, a second workstation. Um, so those are the two that are there. That, that project has not been discussed uh, and therefore no recommendation has been made. We would ask the board to consider recommending the article to town meeting. And I should add that this is an article that has customarily been approved at town meeting in the amount of $50,000. However, it generally has been heard at October town meeting. We've been working hard throughout the preparation for June town meeting to really minimize the number of financial articles requiring action at October town meeting. So we've moved this article from this coming October to June. Madam Chair, I move to uh, recommend Article 21 at town meeting. Second. A motion and a second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I, I, I Opposed? Didn't none. It's unanimous. We'll recommend, recommend to at town meeting. meeting. No, no, excuse me. Recommend to town meeting. Oh, okay. So favorable <laughs> recommendation. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. So you. do we have to amend that? Because uh, I thought Jay you got that. I thought you I, voted to wait till town meeting. Yeah, no, just, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, my intention was to recommend recommend it. Two recommend. town meeting. I'll second the at town meeting. No, two town meeting. <laughs> recommend it. We're going to recommend the article. Not add it, but not add it. I did say add it, you so you have it correctly. It. I just, I didn't mean what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I will second the one. So, so, okay. So the original motion is the original motion it's to, is, re uh, to recommend. It's to I recommend. I circled recommend. Okay. So recommend. As far Sorry. as I'm concerned, you recommend Thank you. it. Thank yes, you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she knew what you. She were understood. Saying, that. So yes. I did. <laughs> All right, so it's recommended and great. Thank you. By at least by us. <laughs> <laughs> Article 22 would appropriate money for special counsel legal expenses. Um, this would allow for additional funding for legal expenses related to the secondary school building project if needed. Um, we board has received a recent update, and our recommendation <coughs> to the board is to recommend passing over Article 22. I move to pass over Article 22, appropriate money for special counsel legal expenses. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Article 23 would establish a school district reserve fund for unanticipated and unbudgeted costs for special education out of district tuition or transportation. The fund would need to be capitalized with funds from town meeting, but a majority approval, a majority vote of both the select board and the school committee would allow for funding to be transferred out of the fund. And this was a product of some deliberations by the financial planning team uh, at which the board is represented. And it was intended to provide a, uh, a safety valve, if you will, or, or a source of funds to address um, the items identified in the first bullet, anything unanticipated or unbudgeted relative to special education, out of district tuition, or transportation. Um, I know that the school um, finance and operations director is here this evening. Mr. Conley, thank you for being here. Uh, those do, you know, from sitting in the financial planning team meetings, I know that those do happen to be some of the most volatile areas of the budget. Um, you'll see in the next article, we're proposing to transfer $100,000 into the fund. That requires town meeting action, but the access to that fund is under the control of the select board and the school committee through separate majority votes. The board previously recommended the article, therefore no action is required this evening. And I want to thank Mr. Conley for his efforts with Superintendent Bernard to research this as the, an option that was available to us. And I, I know, it, I believe it's been supported by the finance committee, Ms. Hurlbut. Thank you very much for your support. <laughs> Madam Chair, through you, Article 24, the transfer of $100,000 from free cash into this fund, um, re previously recommended by the Select Board and by the Finance Committee, um, no actions required this evening. So, Mr. 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 Schultz, I have you as presenting articles. 19, 19 yes, through 24. 19 through 24, yes. Go back. All right. And Mr. O'Leary, the 
the rest is yours. Well, the rest is for me. <laughs> well, you get swamp on. Is that right? Mr. Gilbert. I've been dealing with it for years. <laughs> Article 25 is the appropriation of funds for the survey, engineering, design, and or construction of a portion of Swan Pond Road in the vicinity of Swan Pond. A commitment was made to June Town Meeting last year that authorization from all property owners would be received prior to contracting for stormwater management evaluation, which is required for paving to occur because of the proximity to Swan Pond, which is a drinking water supply for the town of Danvers. Uh, there is one owner of two properties that has declined to sign off. The properties in question are halfway down the gravel portion of the road, thereabouts, uh, and a bit of a challenging area of the road. I, I think even if a resolution were identified to this issue, the study is unlikely to be completed by June 10th town meeting. It would certainly be an aggressive timeline. Um, the, I, to the board, after the last discussion, the DPW director and I had some conversation along with the town engineer about what our options could be for proceeding with this and one of the options is to uh, basically terminate the project just prior to the two properties that are in question my suggestion to the board would be to review that with town meeting since we did make a commitment relative to the entirety of the road i think the concern that we would have that we would just want the board to be aware of is the Failure to sign off means that we can't walk on two of the properties other than to pass through the gravel portion of the road to survey them. We think we could probably get away with getting a general understanding of the, water, the watershed challenges that are there without going on these two parcels of land. But the, the secondary problem that we have is the, the sign off was also an initial authorization of willingness to have the road paved. So we don't have that from one of the property owners right now. And it's a challenge to, to get it, unfortunately. Um, so that's kind of where this stands uh, with regard to it. Um, we tried to look as creatively as we, we could. Um, I don't think that the engineer and the DPW director feel comfortable with paving up to, not paving the two roads in the middle and paving beyond it. I don't want to speak for them, but I know that that's a, a concern. But we do have an option if we wanted to limit the project to up to the point where we have the break in authorization, but I guess we could do that. My suggestion would be to seek town meeting approval because we did make the commitment to town meeting. <coughs> Mr. Just, uh, and, and John, maybe you could help us out. You know, what if we, and I know it's a, a challenge to uh, to work around this property owner because it's unfortunate. I mean, this is a, there's, there's another property owner who hasn't signed up but is at the very end of the street and has no impact on the, hmm. uh, on the proposed project. Uh, this one here is, uh, is far more challenging, but from, a, from just a surveying standpoint and taking a look at um, the extent of what the project would entail without this property owner signing off, how can we proceed? Uh, how, how far have we proceeded and what, what more uh, can we do? So we haven't, we haven't John Clipfell, town engineer, good evening, welcome, new, new board members. Uh, Thank you. I've, I've been out there multiple times, driven up and down the street. Um, the two properties that are in question where the, the resident has it signed off, there's, there's kind of a localized issue right there just on those properties. The, the houses are very close to the road, but that's kind of isolated. And then the bigger drainage issue is beyond that property where there's, there's a wetland crossing currently um, that collects a lot of drain water. But we have authorization from those properties. So everything <laughs> past part of that's, that. Part of that is the town also, right? Correct. So. There's 2,700 feet of road in question. There's about 1,100 feet up to the property owner that will not sign off, so it's almost half. Um, and then they own about 500, three or 400 feet, I believe, and then there's another 1,000 feet past that. So they're kind of like right in the middle, and the road doesn't just go straight across their property. You kind of really have to see it to, to understand it, but the road comes in zigzags around the house and trees very tight to each other and then goes back um, in more of a linear fashion. Um, but in order to get the preliminary work done to get an idea as to what the scope would be, can we work around it? Sure, I mean we can, we can do an engineering study of everything before and after and going through the property. We'd have to really get out of our vehicles and take some measurements and some widths and some, uh, some and shoot some grades, uh, which wouldn't be very invasive, uh, but we could get a, a total picture of I think that's, of what This we is what we were talking about initially, was, was getting an idea of the scope, of the work that would need to be done, and unfortunately this 
property owner is uh, through, through a hurdle in the road here. Right, you right. Know, a little roadblock. Uh, but I would think that we'd be able to work around most of this in order to get to be able to quantify things for the rest of the residents up there. So we could do an evaluation. Um, the question is, if we can't get a sign off from that one property owner in the middle, is it worth it spending the money to do the evaluation of the whole road if, if we don't know what's going to happen in the middle? Well, again, but you would have a better idea as to, you know, that 300 feet, really what it means, you know, from a runoff sure. standpoint. And, you know, how critical is it? Yep. You know, as far as evaluating the project, and again, at some point they they could change their mind. And again, my understanding is, you know, they're not interested in paying, but other residents are up there are willing to to chip in to get it done. So, um, some more neighborhood ne negotiations that need to take place in order to bring this thing forward. I mean, this has been ongoing for the new members for years, yeah. and years, nineteen ninety nine years, yeah. and. Um, and we've gotten so close where all the other residents up there have signed off other than this one property owner. And uh, unfortunately, it's you know, right smack dab in the middle of things. Uh, but to me, I think, you know, we made a commitment to go up there and see if we can evaluate. Yes, it was based upon the sign offs of everybody, but we've got everybody but one property owner. Uh, if there's a workaround, we should see if we can work around just to get an answer. Because we don't know. We haven't quantified this whole thing yet. Right. Mr. Schultz? My only concern is that we want to help these people out, obviously, is I don't think the town should be appropriating a dollar until we know we can actually do the project. Because if this homeowner is going to just not sign off on it, it's never going to get done. So we're going to spend all this money doing survey engineering design work for something that's going to sit at town hall and collect dust. I think it behooves the residents to get an agreement with that one property owner. And then I think that it's appropriate for the town to sign off on the engineering studies. Otherwise, we're just kind of throwing money after something that may or may not happen. And I, I wish it would happen, but they're going to they have to meet together as residents and work something out there. Can you remind remind us again why why um, there's no other, it's the topography that prevents the road from going in any other manner through that area, or is it just because it's private, all privately? I think that originally that would do, you know, they were just camps uh, along the, the pond and that was just the way that they built the road. It just kind of, you know, they saw a tree and they went right, you know, they just, and, and the big difficulty with this for the new board members is that a lot of this is, it's, it's not a, an accepted, you know, or not a, an unaccepted private way. This is private property that the road goes through. There's no uh, right of way through that property. Um, there was a land court case that was that was done in the past. Um, I don't believe our lawyers have have looked into that. Have oh, they, they, they have. And it, well, it determined definitively, through you, Madam Chair, that the property owners on the road have the right to pass and repass over each other's property to get to their own property. It, it doesn't make the road a public way. It's not been accepted by a town, by the town. The road has not been laid out in the fashion that you did just a few moments ago relative to Little Meadow Way. Um, I, I should note that that is an option that's available to the town, and we have a bylaw that allows for us to go through a formal street acceptance process. But going back now, goodness, is it a year, more than a year, a year and a half? Well, 20 years <laughs> more. But going back to the most recent iteration of this, there was some apprehension on the part of the board and on the part of the property owners because there's a significant engineering cost associated with that. Essentially, we, we were trying to identify the least expensive option for getting pavement down on the gravel road that's there, but that option did not include us taking the road as town-owned property. We would effectively be getting authorization from the, own, the abutting property owners or the owners on which the road is located to, to pave it in some share that's not been determined at this point financially. And that that would actually, I'm assuming, require some type of eminent domain taking as well, wouldn't it? Because it's all private. There would be a taking, absolutely. Yes. So, uh, I mean, that that's a pretty hefty cost factor sure. to, to the it, town. It also creates zoning noncompliance for a number of properties there. You, I mean, you can see clearly the ones I've drawn that trapezoidal figure around. They would, their you know, single house lots would effectively become, two lots would become four. And that has its own zoning implications yeah. that are a challenge there. Um, 
So I, I just don't know that that's a viable option. I'm just noting that it is an option that's prescribed under our bylaws. But what we have is a situation where, you know, the, the road is being maintained by the town. It has been widened over the years. And, you know, we're putting gravel and sand in several times a year in order to maintain uh, safe, safe ac access for uh, public safety vehicles. And it's just, uh, you know, we're continuously spending money up there anyway. Uh, we've got a, a willingness on the part of all the residents, with the exception of uh, one, uh, to chip in and help make the situation better. So. Ms. Gonzalez. Excuse my ignorance, because I'm new to this whole thing, but um, are there any paper roads that you can use to go around that property? I'm sure you've looked at all that, but. Yeah, no, I mean, the big open white spaces, that's all That's all wetland area. There's, There's no a lot of wetland road. area out there. Um, yeah, they they kind of built the road in the, in the best way to get through. Um, it's all very overgrown and. Because um, I know where I live used to it used to be camps, and yeah. I think that's a lot of the town was, and there's a lot of little paper roads that, you know, if you looked right. that you can use. So. Yeah, that's what makes curious. this project unique. It's it's not there are no paper roads okay. or unaccepted private ways. This is just a gravel road going between people's pro going through people's properties bisecting them with no formal layout and there's a there's a lot of grade and elevation changes that don't show up on on the map as well because it's near the lake it kind of slopes down towards the lake and then the road goes up and down pretty si significantly through the through the length of it any other comment i mean i think the board is is fully supportive of what the resident has been fully supportive of what the residents want to do there but it, it seems more of a private that yeah. they maybe need to do some type of private I just transaction or action to I, I think that the town at this point could still get a better sense of really the scope of the project that we'd be looking at if we and again I think we can work around this one property owner because that's what we're looking for initially from town engineer just to give us an idea as to what the scope and scale of the project would be what are we really talking about um, I think if we could continue if we, if we can work around these individuals then you know then work around and we get the answers to the question that we were looking for anyway I mean, if these people had signed off we'd be doing it um, they haven't signed off so we can work around them just but to get a better idea even if you work around them I'm saying working around for, for, for the Engineering, for, yeah, just for the engineering or the. the but once the, that's the done, if they don't sign off, it, you still can't do anything, right? Yeah, you still have any engineering that's sitting on the shelf. That you can't even do. Yeah. You still can't do anything. That's the problem. I understand what Steve said. I agree right. with you. Well, we could do some of these people, but I can't see spending the money on something. That, as it looks now, it probably won't happen. And again, it, you even talk to the residents about taking it up as far as we can. Again, any improvements up in this area is an improvement. Well, yeah, yeah I mean, a if, significant if we go to that point. I'm fine with that. Well, then you're missing the whole other yeah. side of it, too. You well, have to. You also have an issue. These residents car, so. bought a house on the dirt road, and there's a lot of residents in this town that bought a house yeah. on the dirt road. We want to fix every dirt road in the town. That's what you're walking down. And it just, I think they got to figure out something with this resident. They got to sit down with him and him or her and work something out. We can't spend the money on something that may not even be built. I, I agree. I agree to a degree to a certain extent, but we've, uh, we've moved past that already. And, and they've come to us with the petition. We've been, we've been as a board, fully supportive. But we told them you have to have everybody sign off. That's been a requirement. And they're, they're trying. Yeah. I think they appreciate the board's ongoing support for this. There's a letter in the file for, for that. So I, I don't think we should just give it up, but I don't think there's enough to, to we, you know, we're at, a, we're at the same standstill as the residents here. Yeah. And, and at less ability to move something forward beyond just taking a study of it or taking a look at it. Well, I mean, so. if we can take it, if we can do a thousand feet of this road or eleven hundred feet of it, I mean, to me, from a public safety standpoint and access and egress standpoint, it's 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 a significant improvement to the area. Um, so, you know, is the objection because they're going to pay more if it gets paid? With them? What is the objection? By the resident, do we have yeah, what is <laughs> I'd be happy to speak to you offline. Okay. <laughs> well, it sounds like paving as much as you can would make sense. Yeah. You know, 
that's not fair to the other people. On it isn't, side. but that's not I, us. That's that's that. Yeah, but I I wouldn't support that. Neighbor. So you're gonna do nothing? Yeah. I Is think you have to get the. We gave the residents a directive. You get everybody on board. We'll do this for you. They haven't done that. I mean, I'm not saying it's their fault, but how many studies do we have at town hall that we have that we're not using for one well, reason or another? It's coming up. Let's take it as far as we can take it at this point. And yeah. Again, and it's again, if we can work around as far as you know without spending a lot of funds just to give you an idea as to what the scope magnitude of the rest of the project would be fine but well, how much is this going to cost this so, so let, if yeah. I could just let me just where we're actually talking about a warrant article where we're asking people to vote to appropriate an amount of money we really don't have any yeah, idea about so at least for tonight's purposes we, we, we don't want to give it up but we we're not going to be well, I also don't Do you want, want to wait till town meeting to see what? No, and I also don't want to waste any more time as far as, you know, not looking into it either. In other words, if we're going to talk about taking it to a certain point, then at least give them direction to go take a look to a certain, certain point, you know, so that town meeting can make an informed decision as to whether or not they want to do it piecemeal or all at once. So, my, guess is, my guess is, you know, at this particular point in time, it, it's going to be an update to town meeting as to what the status of things are. Yeah. And... But I, I would like the town to have uh, more information, as much information as we possibly can, to, to bring the town. How do we get the cost of this? I guess it is kind of hard to vote on something on what the cost is. How, how do we get? So, so the study has, do you, Madam Chair? So the study was previously funded at town meeting. We have the funds yep. available to do it. We told town meeting we were going to get the sign off of all the property owners. To Mr. O'Leary's point, I think we do have an opportunity at June town meeting to indicate to town meeting we don't have all of the sign off. We're going to proceed with the study for the portions before and after this anyway and allow town meeting the opportunity to weigh in. I Do guess. we know how much that's going to cost, though? I want to say it was $30,000, John. Uh, right? Yeah, $10,000 $10, was the, the engineering study just to tell us what type of drainage we're going to need out there. Uh -huh. And then beyond that, we'll know the number or the price of how much the drainage installation would cost. And then we could give you a price on the paving as well. This study is to identify the drainage issues and create so a cost. It would just be ten thousand. It's ten thousand dollars just to do the, the study, the survey, We're essentially. Okay. But you're just going to skip over this parcel and do a survey of up to and then cross over and then the rest. It's yeah. basically what you're going to do, right? Yeah, I mean we can we can do bits and pieces of it. You know, I mean the ten thousand dollars was to do the whole thing. Yeah. If we we can do definitely do the first half, no problem. We can do the second half. Uh, we can, you know, look at the middle and see what what we think that <laughs> might take. Um, you know, it's hard to start piecemealing it. Yeah, um, is that able to be done to give some sort of an estimate to, to town meeting, or is it too late to do that at this point? Uh, I'd have to talk to a consult the consultant that we uh, had spoken with earlier and gave us the the estimate. What their schedule would be. I mean, we're we're cutting it really close at this point. So we're pro all we're trying to do with this article is appropriate ten thousand dollars. No, it's already done. No, it's already been appropriated. Right. So, so what, what are we doing? What are we doing in Article Twenty Five? What are we appropriate? So this has been a standing placeholder mm -hmm. for us to yeah. authorize mm -hmm. to seek appropriation of funding for the actual construction project. The amount of which would need to be informed by the study that has not yet been completed. All right. So we got to pass over that obviously for June. Uh, presumably, I don't know. But part of the issues we, yeah. we've been limited by. The statements made at the June town meeting. We're not able to complete the study because we don't have all of the sign offs in effect. If the board wishes to direct us otherwise, we'll certainly respond to that. But we've been limited in what we can do because we don't have the sign off that we represent. So, the town if you did town. this study and you did this half and that half, and then you're kind of guessing what might happen here, and then it goes through. He signs off. Do you have to go back and redo that study? Uh, if we don't get the complete information from his property, then we'd have to evaluate just that small portion again uh, in the future. So you'd need. And more, I don't expect there's a huge there's a huge issue uh, in that section, um, but it is kind of a localized drainage area that would need to be looked at in more depth. If the directive is not to walk on those two properties or do any survey on those two properties, we can do before and after, um, and then we'd have to just fill in the middle. And we could tell you the price of how much it's going to cost for drainage before and after and paving before and after, and then we... Can we do the survey staying on the road? 
or do you have to get off the road to? Yeah, you'd have to really shoot some grades uh, yeah. with a with a survey, with survey. I think you have a right to be on the road if we're maintaining the road. Right. Yeah. Right. That's the. <laughs> yeah. Where do the yeah. limits of that for you know yeah. end? Right. <laughs> I mean, I, so what's the what's the board's pleasure here? What do, what do we want to do? Where we're so gonna the question is: Do we want to authorize the survey to take place? Not do we want to appropriate money? The money's already appropriate. Money's already appropriate. So, in, in no. through you, Madam Chair, if this proceeded the way everyone expected, we would be <laughs> yes. here before you this evening with the study completed, an estimate of the cost for the stormwater mm -hmm. work that's required, and an estimate of the cost for the actual pavement being. Um, installed as well as well as any other tree work we'd have the whole package for you and then there would be another probably lengthy discussion about how we're going to actually fund the project because that's something that has not yet been resolved there has been a tradition of doing what I'll call a 50 50 um, sharing of costs between the abutting property owners in the town I've heard that that's been proposed as a potential model for this um, I, but you know again that has not been determined with regard to the, the project but for us to be able to, you know, based on what we have, if we're going to do the stormwater study, we need direction because we've only been directed in accordance with what was represented at town meeting. And we're not able to fulfill the representation at town meeting. So if the board wishes to direct us to conduct the study, regardless, we can do that. I just, I don't foresee it's going to be done in time for June town meeting. And even if it is, the whole question of how we fund it is unlikely to be resolved. Never mind, are we seeking feedback from the Capital Improvement Planning Committee? And the other factors that go with it. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, our presentation to town meeting was, it was made with the, the best of intentions in anticipation of cooperation from the residents up there. And we have one uncooperative resident, you know, who are uh, harming the opportunities for everybody else up there. You know, for me, and again, I, I'm, I keep pressing on this thing here because it's been pressing for years here on me, you know, my phone been ringing out for years um, it, it justifiably so so to, to me if we can do a work around this particular property owner let's just move forward with what we have already appropriated get the answers to the questions that we have and it's gonna there'll be more questions but at least we'll have a better idea as to what we're, we're facing here and whether or not it's feasible so uh, get it some are familiar with the area up there in this particular section of the road doesn't appear to be underwater. You know. Yeah, it's not a contributor no. to the rest of the road. It's no. kind of like an isolated area that. Right. So it's it's not as though it's a it's a critical area where it, it dips down and you're going to have runoffs and all the rest. This is pretty, it's yeah. windy, but it's pretty flat. Uh, but to, so to me, you know, let's just move forward and get some answers to the questions that we have, and try and quantify as best we can. And again, it's not going to be for 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 you know this June town meeting, but at least we'll have a report saying we're moving forward on it. And um, how? Now. So we have the town engineer basically indicating we can do that work around just to get an idea or get a sense of it. It doesn't mean we're going to fund the project because we, yeah, or, we or arrange for funding or funding or what have you. So do we have a, at least a consensus? Are we all in favor of at least directing that this this take place as a work around? Mr. Schultz? Yeah, I, I would with the yes with the caveat of, of how many miles of dirt roads do we have in this town right now we have five miles of dirt roads. all right i think if we start putting town money into to the problem with the dirt roads the public knows at home when the, i don't i don't think this was a development but like when the builder puts a development they usually will put a, a road in now you get some of these newer houses in town and these are older houses but some houses in town that we the builder never put the money in and now it's left to the town to pick up that tab I don't know if that's right, because what these folks bought on this property, they know they bought on a dirt road. And so I just concern that if you're going to build a dirt road for these guys, you have the other five miles of road that you're going to now be paying to build a dirt road for. So it's a precedent that we we got to be careful. I know you I know you mentioned that already, but we already basically got the imprimatur of the town at the town meeting to move forward with this one specific section. We had a lot of support that appeared. For the engineering. The that's right, to yeah. just at least push that push that portion forward. No, I would support that piece, but I just yeah. want to be cautious of us paying for dirt roads. So. Doesn't, does, we're not even anywhere right. near there yet. And we also had Mr. Kelleher who stood up multiple times and said we already have a roadway improvement plan in the works and some roads have been sl slated for improvement for years, accepted ways. So yep. this is 
basically only one not the five miles of the dirt road this is only one specific section we have a number of the citizens the residents come forward wanting this we had approval at town meeting so doesn't mean we're going to fund it doesn't mean we can do that work of improving it yet we don't know that that was the purpose of the study so at least if we can get you to the point of where we're sort of morphing what was directed to be done and and Mrs. Hurlbut wants to make some comments as well. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what you're referring to. Uh, you're talking about Don Gallagher? Mm -hmm. Yep. The Rose Program, you know, the Don Gallagher and myself on the Capitol Committee um, <laughs> discussed has nothing to do with dirt roads. Mm -hmm. the, the idea originally was that the Board of Selectmen would come up with a policy about how to address citizens who wanted the town to go in and improve their dirt roads. It has nothing to do with John Keller, I don't believe. Yeah, other than Don's yeah, point. I'm not, I'm not yeah, saying no, that Don's point was well taken. That wasn't the point I was right. making. But, but Don's point was well taken that, you know, he just said, you know, we have 22 or 24 miles right. of uh, roads in need of repair right now. Right. That, that are that already we're not able to address a, and to take care of. So before we go down this right. path, you know, right. it, but a separate issue to, to Abby's point where if the town is willing to come up with some sort of agreement, people are not accepted streets to improve them. That's a different program. That's a different discussion. So, so we need to move on. So we have once again discussed this for quite a long right. time. So I'm just trying so. to get some director from the board to the administration to move forward. Yes. We'll and I think, are we all in favor of doing yeah, so? Moving uh, forward on $10,000 study. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Gilbert. Thank you. I would just ask the board for a motion to be approved. I'll make a motion to recommend yeah. article. No, nope. no, no. <laughs> we motion. can't do that. No, we can't do that. Madam Chair, I, I move to, uh, uh, yes. Yes. I don't want to say direct. Uh, uh, to, 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 encourage, to encourage the administration to move forward with the engineering study at Swamp Pond Road project. Despite the fact that we don't have full resident approval. Uh, right. Yeah. I would second that motion. Okay, so I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Do what you can do. Tell us what you can tell us. No problem. And thank you for staying here and of course. sit in on this. That's wow. yours, Mr. O'Leary, by the way. I'm just going to move to pass over. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, well, we're not. We're <laughs> not. <laughs> we're, so. We'll have a recommendation at town meeting. Yes. So that's what we have. Wait on that. Already. So we're not right. Not yet. Yeah, not right, yet. Not yet. Yeah. So we'll okay. leave that as it is. Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, through you, I do want to congratulate the town engineer on the birth of his third daughter, Emily wow. Gray. Hey, congratulations. Last Friday. Awesome. Congratulations, oh, John. Wow. You look good. You're holding up well. <laughs> <laughs> You're awake. You're right. <laughs> Came in to get some rest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he's hanging around for so long. <laughs> Through you, Madam Chair, Article 26, the approval of the Hillview Golf Cart lease for terms uh, in excess of three years. This would authorize the Hillview Commission with the approval of the town administrator to enter into leases in excess of three years, which is the statutory maximum under state law for uh, golf carts. The commission customarily seeks to lease golf carts uh, over a five-year term. That's a model that has been identified to be advantageous, and this would authorize that the select board previously recommended the article, uh, and therefore no action is required this evening. Article 27 would amend the general bylaws for uh, restriction on um, single-use plastic bags. This is something that was proposed um, by the board in its discussion of warrant articles. Uh, we consulted with town council to come up with language that would uh, restrict the use of single-use plastic bags with limited exceptions. We based it on language from town council, feedback from the DPW, feedback from the health director. Uh, I believe that the select board was waiting to hear from the Board of Health with regard to this particular matter. The Board of Health is, is scheduled to discuss this draft bylaw, however, it will not be till its meeting on Wednesday evening, so that feedback is not available for discussion this evening. The language that the board reviewed at the May 6th meeting is what was included in the warrant and will be mailed to individuals' homes. 
and the board will have an opportunity to consider feedback from the Board of Health at its meeting on June 10th. And therefore, we're not recommending, the board has the option to make a, a recommendation, but we don't have any further information to provide, at least at this point in time. We're going to wait on that one. We can wait on it, but again, I, I just think it's a, it's an important step for the town of North Reading to come up to the times, get on board uh, from an environmental standpoint. We're not uh, reinventing the wheel here. We're not uh, um, leading the charge here. We're not uh, blazing any new trails. Uh, we're just playing a little bit of catch up here. And I think what's being proposed is not as stringent as it is in some communities and uh, stringent enough to uh, help make a difference. So, you know, I would... Uh, uh, we withheld our recommendation until the two new board members came on board so that they could weigh in uh, also as to whether or not they thought it was uh, a worthy cause. So um, I would encourage you to come on board and uh, recommend it to town meeting. Madam Chair, through you, I, I, I misspoke. There is one piece of information. It's relative to the town of Tuxbury, which I was asked to investigate. Yeah. Uh, Tuxbury had a warrant article on in the fall, I believe, to put a restriction in place similar to this. There was another article that was on their warrant for their Springtown meeting. Uh, that article uh, would have repealed the bylaw uh, with the restriction. Um, the repeal failed at town meeting, and uh, I do know that my counterpart, the town manager, uh, recommended against the repeal, and the reason for the recommendation against the repeal was because they wanted to provide an alternative location for the disposal of single-use plastic bags rather than having them go into the general recycling stream and cause problems in, um, in for them, what I believe is single-stream recycling. For us, it would be dual-stream recycling. And we have heard that that's an issue. Uh, a lot of times people are putting their recyclables in these plastic bags from Stop and Shop or otherwise, putting them into the bucket. When they go through the machines for sorting the recycling, they basically cause the machine to stop functioning properly. It takes time and effort to remove the plastic from the machine. So in the, at least in the case of Tuxbury, they advocated against the repeal uh, of the warrant article. <clears throat> Mr. Schultz. I just want to voice my opposition to this I, I think it hurts the consumer I think it's gonna hurt the two people that we need to protect most is your seniors and your people on fixed incomes because the cost of goods is gonna go up in town I don't think this has an environmental impact at all um, very de minimis um, I just think it, the government needs to stay out of people's lives instead of getting more involved in people's lives what are we gonna ban next I mean I don't know plastic water bottles I, I don't know what, where do you start once you start going down this path and, I just think it's going to hurt the consumer. It's going to hurt seniors the most because they're going to pay more for goods in town. So I'm, I'm going to be voting against this article. I will be voting against it also. I have done a lot of research on this and agree that it doesn't make that much of a difference. Um, it hurts the small business. It hurts the seniors who use those as trash bags so they don't have to carry big trash bags. And people will actually be buying more kitchen-sized trash bags, which are worse <laughs> for the environment. So. Um, I will also not be recommending that. I, I don't see how this is going to be. I, I think the harm that's being done now is far out, far out weighs any few pennies that people have to pay a little bit more in order to carry something home. I know it's not convenient, but we're not talking about convenience. We're talking about environmental impacts and what's it, what's already occurring. And I think, you know, while you say it's de minimis, you know, is the town of North Reading going to make a difference? But no, no, the town of North Reading with the town of Reading with the town of Tuxbury with the city of Boston uh, can make a difference and should be making a difference. You know, so it, it's not dollars and cents. Uh, this is an environmental issue that needs to be addressed. And, you know, the failure to address it at the federal level and at the state level doesn't mean that we should ignore it at the local level. And it, that's where they listen. When things happen at the local level from the ground up, then the people in the higher up in levels of government will listen and hopefully react to it. So to me, this is uh, far more than a matter of inconvenience, far more than a matter of a few extra cents. I'm, my, my oldest son uh, had the benefit of me cleaning his car this weekend while he was uh, out of town uh, at the academy. And he lives in the city of Boston. And in his car, I mean, he probably had 15 uh, stop and shop bags from the city of Boston, which are reusable, which I think he paid an extra 10 cents for every single one. So I reminded him over the weekend that, you know, you don't have to spend another 10 cents. You've got 15 of those bags in the back of your vehicle right now, all folded up and ready to be used again. And uh, yes, they're plastic, but they're of such a, uh, a caliber that it's you know, reusable and recyclable. 
So it's time for the town of Northrop to get on board. It's time for uh, to us to uh, remind ourselves that it, you know the few extra cents that it might cost us for packaging. And again, we're not looking to roll this out tomorrow. We're looking to roll it out for the first of the year. So for those local businesses that already have a supply, they can use that supply up. But when they're reordering, they're going to have to reorder something which is reusable. You know, and it's a, again, it's they can still be plastic products. They just have to be recyclable and usable, reusable. So, you know, I, I think uh, it's not de minimus, in my estimation. I'm not it's saying a, it's de minimus. I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Schultz says I'm not, I think it's de minimus. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not de minimus. Can to we me, all it's not cumulative. talk over one another? Just one at a time. Everyone is very opinionated yeah. about this topic. So, so this, I think it's important for us. But Jane has to keep keep track yeah. of everyone. So I think it's important for us to you know put forward. Uh, the proposal, uh, town meeting will speak, and and I think uh, as members of the board we should be leaders of the community. And again, uh, think go global and act local, right? That was an old bumper sticker. It's still, it's still around. I think we get one. Mr. Walmer? Um, I, I I understand the issue about when they're processing the recyclables and these bags get caught up in the machines and it causes a huge problem. It's down the line that's the problem, and we already know that China and other places are rejecting. Recyclables, they're taking, they're taking that out of the, the stream. And I have seen more and more in my own family and other people as well, they're just getting conditioned to bring in the same bag over and over. They're reusing their own bags. So I think it, the world needs to change and uh, we can do a little bit here. But the biggest thing is the plastic gets inside the recyclable and that kills the machines. And that's a huge efficiency issue that really affects us all. So I, I will be voting for us to do that. I'll just add to that that we, we've seen that become an issue in terms of our contract, as other communities have as well, where the we're no longer getting the return on recyclables that we did previously because that's one of the major factors there. Yeah. Everybody's contracts have increased well, exponentially. Well, because of China, not because of plastic bags. That's why the cost of the recycling has gone up appreciably. That's what we've been told by all the experts. That they don't want to accept that th those items anymore. And one of them, in very specifically, we were told with the plastic bags. Yeah. So, um, and I'm I'm in agreement with uh, Mr. O'Leary, Mr. Walner on this one. I think we're behind what what needs to be done on it, and I think we need to move at least move it forward to let let the people of the town know. And I think it's a great point that you both raise of is it going to which consumers is it going to impact and maybe if we do implement this it'd be something that we could offer to you know those a, a bag you know a bag or something like that to help ease the cost burden of picking up a dollar bag or a dollar fifty bag at the store or something like that so maybe there's something that we could do you know commit to doing as a board or as a town to be able to Offset <laughs> that but burn. Ready Cooperative Bank was giving away the for free. The bags, the bags for, for free. free at the right. senior. At the yeah. I just have bag. faith in people being able to make their own decisions and not being forced or told what to do. Totally, totally. I could, I could agree. But sometimes, you know, that's why we have the Congress. That's why <laughs> state senate and state house representative, and you have board of selectmen to help legislate and set the tone. Because sometimes we can't police ourselves. We need some assistance. So are we, would you like to <laughs> Madam, make a motion? Yeah, oh. Madam Chair, I move to that we uh, recommend Article 27. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? A second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Aye. No. 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 So we have a three, three to two. two. Three to two. So I will report to town meeting. Was they have not a recommendation of a three to two vote. Mm -hmm. So now we leave it up to the town to yep. decide. Article 28, uh, proposed zoning bylaw amendment for the uh, planned unit development component of our zoning bylaw. Uh, at this point in time, we anticipate passing over the article. Uh, the board left it to be a recommendation at town meeting. I should note that passing over the article at town meeting is not um, you know, finalized, but certainly the timelines associated with the town meeting are becoming much tighter. It does not necessarily foreclose the potential for this article being considered at a future town meeting, October or otherwise. 
My suggestion, Mr. O'Leary, Mr. Schultz, you can tell me if you disagree. Leave the recommendation to be made at town meeting at this point in time while the, the conversation or issue remains open. Yep, yeah, I, I concur. Yeah, and the town has put out a statement on That's correct. On this put a as statement well. out last Tuesday yep. with regard to this matter. <coughs> recommendation will be made at town meeting as it's already written. Thank you. So we've already made it. We don't have to take any oh, action. Yes, yeah. that's no right. action. Yep. Yep. That's right. No action required because the recommendation will be made at town meeting. I wrote that. <laughs> Sorry about that. And finally, the final article of street acceptance we reviewed already. And that concludes the presentation relative to I county. expect this will be easier for me. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> you got some winners in there. <laughs> the best for Thank last you, day. Mr. Gilberto. And we already went uh, legal bills next. All right. So, so we're not yet. No. We're on to um, the next item on the agenda, which is number thirteen, which is a review of the two thousand and nineteen DPW construction plan. Invite our DPW director to speak. And Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, Madam Chair, through you. Um, so I've asked the DPW director to prepare uh, a summary of anticipated road construction, uh, road and other construction projects that will be going on in DPW this construction season. Um, uh, I do that for two reasons. The first is we often get feedback from folks occasionally including board members with regard to a number of the projects that have been previously approved or that are in the queue. Um, secondly, there's a lot of prep work for some of the paving projects in town that we feel it's uh, important to get out there that we are advancing the preparation work with regard to it. Um, and and I, I think it's also important for us to note for the residents the timing of some of the larger work like the paving. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to move to get that done as soon as possible, but we are subject to some limitations, including the contractor's availability. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to the DPW director for the presentation he's got here this evening with regard to a number of projects, both large and small. Let me just ask you two before you begin. So you have this presentation for us. Is it available for um, the residents to be able to access on the website as well? We'll make it available on the town website, but this is the first it's being previewed, and we That's wanted great. to give the board the, board the cour courtesy of seeing it first. Yes, thank you. Sure. So thank you, Madam Chair. Good evening, members of the board. Uh, thank you for giving me a few minutes tonight to go over some of the, the larger projects that we're, uh, we're taking on in public works this season. Um, I have about a dozen slides or so, so not terribly long, but I'm going to hit the, the, uh, the major projects, and I'd be happy to get into detail uh, on anything if you if you feel the need. The projects we want to talk about, first I just want to hit, touch on the annual maintenance projects. We do street sweeping every year. We do catch basin cleaning every year. Uh, the paving projects uh, I'm going to talk about were the result of many sessions with the Capital Improvement uh, Planning Committee, a number of meetings with uh, the town engineer, the water superintendent, and, and the operations manager. A tremendous amount of time and effort went into, into that plan. Um, I can get into some detail when we, when we get to that, if you'd like to hear that. We're also going to pave a section of, um, of roadway between the, um, the middle and high school uh, projects from the past there that remained sort of unpaved, and I'll get to that slide. And then I'm going to talk briefly about the Recreation Center in Ipswich River Park paving, which is sort of outside my purview, but uh, we felt that it was a rather you know, a larger project that was worth discussing here. Then I'm going to talk about some drainage projects throughout town and then a larger water project. So first, street sweeping. Uh, the annual street sweeping started about four weeks ago. What we do, what has been the past practice, is to start the sweeping uh, with our own sweeper, with our own crews, and then augment that later in the season with our contracted sweeper. So uh, the, we've been out for about four weeks. The contract has been in for about a week. We'll work in tandem now. What we typically do is the town will take care of all the major routes throughout town, and then when we get our contractor and we go and we hit the side streets together, uh, it works very well. They've been doing it uh, in this fashion for many years. Uh, we do manage to hit every paved roadway in town. That's accepted. And uh, we, we certainly should be finished comfortably by August 1st. Catch basin cleaning, uh, this is handled entirely by a contractor. We do this every year. 
Um, they'll be doing all of the, the catch basins in town. We, we have approximately 800, 1,880 of those. Um, they've already been in town now for about a week. And uh, again, they'll be finished by August 1st. Very important component. Quick question on that. I, I did notice I was out jogging the other day. I noticed like when the street sweeper goes over the catch basin, it kind of clogs the catch basin. Yeah. Is that, a, I know there's probably no way around that, huh? It's just the way the sweepers Well, work. no, we should be following up on that just to make sure that those catch basins are clean. So they do, they do tend to create some, yeah. some sediment and debris that's left behind. What we do, particularly if there's going to be a larger storm, whether we, whether there's been sweeping or not, is we know where the problem areas are, where there is catch basins that typically work, will accumulate debris, and we'll go out, you know, like we were threatening some thunderstorms. We'll send guys out to go and hit those problem areas to start, and then area, any areas maybe we were sweeping or things like that, any, any where there has been construction or something like that, that has potential to have a, a problem with a catch basin, we'll go out and address that prior to the start of the storm. So, okay. yeah, it's just, it is part it of that. It just happens. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So the annual paving, I, I, I mentioned uh, tremendous amount of effort. So when we went to um, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, we typically, uh, just to take a step back here, what has traditionally been the funding is we get our funding sources through Chapter 90, so that's state funding, gives us about 500,000. Uh, in this fiscal year it was 515, next year it's about 516 and change. Traditionally what the town has provided is an additional 300,000, so for a total of approximately 800,000 in funding. Um, in 2012, the town invested in a pavement management project uh, program called the Beta System. So what that is is uh, a group of people come out, they review every roadway surface in town, and they apply what's called an RSR, it's a roadway surface rating, to every single paved surface in town. And then they give you a, a, basically a data set of all the different segments of roadway, and then their RSR. So John and I use that uh, to sort of base our anticipated paving projects then what we do is we look at what infrastructure need, uh, needs are in the worst obviously you want to address the worst roads so then we look at what the infrastructure needs and some of those roadways need water main replacement water service work drainage and then sometimes uh, some of those roadways may have gas projects that are scheduled for two or three years from now so obviously we don't want to go in and pave something when we know there's a significant project coming in a couple of years so we did quite a bit of runaround we we started with uh, we looked at a five-year, five, five million dollar project. So just hypothetically speaking, if we had five million dollars, how would we address it? We started out with five years, we expanded it to seven. Uh, we used, again, that beta program. We used the, the worst rated streets and supplemented, um, supplemented those with some of the, so the roadways that needed lesser improvements, so to speak. And then what we looked at is a logical way to address these, and, and, and this, you know, theoretically will give us a better bid from a, from a paving contractor is if we keep our paving projects in proximity to each other so we don't have a street on one side on one corner of town, another street in another corner so they're not spread out through, through town. So what we considered was the RSR rating, infrastructure needs, and proximity. So we looked at basically doing neighborhoods. So what we settled on for this year was the Peter Road, Richard Road, Victoria Road, Anthony Road neighborhood, and then Charles Street which is close by, uh, which has been uh, sort of a hot topic over the last couple of years and we're going to address that this year. So we've been out uh, on Peter and Anthony replacing all the old iron services. Uh, the, water, we, the, the water department has been up there many, many times over the past few years to address these old iron services that were installed, having a lot of breaks. So what we're going through is we're using our own crews as well as our contractor um, to go in and replace all the iron services. So we've already, uh, we've already done a good majority of that. Our crews are working very well. We have a new contra contractor this year who's doing an excellent job for us out there. So we're way ahead of schedule. We've been in contact and, and uh, we've talked to our, contra our paving contractor this year. He anticipates being able to be in North Reading by mid to late July, so that's excellent. Uh, you may have heard me mention once or twice that sort of a pet peeve of mine that we get our paving done prior to the start of school. Uh, so this is, we're really ahead of the game here. Uh, we want to stay on their schedule, so we want to make sure that we get all those services, all of those infrastructure um, needs taken care of prior to their anticipated start. We're going to do a little bit of uh, some drainage extension. We have a closed drainage system out there. We're going to extend some of that drainage system. John's been doing a terrific job on looking at uh, it, ways we can uh, help people with their sump pumps and, and you know, really give the, uh, the, the folks out there a terrific finished product. 
Um, one of the, the sort of the downsides to this is there's a number of street trees out there that are interrupting the sidewalk and they're interfering with the roadway. So uh, we've looked at that. John and John's gone out, and John's philosophy and mine differ. Uh, John will go out and take every tree down. It's sort of he's got that engineering mentality, where I have the mentality of uh, I'm the guy the residents call. So uh, we're going to go out there, and we're going to have tree hearings. We're, we're scheduling a tree hearing, and, and we'll have the advertisement in the paper, uh, hopefully very soon. We'll advertise that. We'll have a hearing. I've already heard from a number of residents. So we went out and we flagged all of the trees that we think need to be removed. Some of, those, some of those ribbons will be removed. We'll be able to save some of the trees, I think, that are out there. Um, but it'll give, the it'll give an opportunity for all the residents to chime in. We, like I said, we've already heard from a few of them on why they want to save trees and, do those and, and uh, preserve what they can. The folks I've talked to understand that we're going to be doing the sidewalks as well. We need to make sure that those sidewalks remain accessible. What you'll see now is if you take a ride out there, if you take a ride down any side street that has tree trees, is when you plant a tree in a two or three foot grass strip, uh, you, you wait 10 years and that tree is now, it's in the gutter, so we're hitting it with the plow, we're interfering with the roots, but uh, I think even worse than that is the fact that it's heaving the sidewalk. So many people don't use the sidewalks, it's difficult with a stroller or a wheelchair or something like that, and we have an obligation to make sure that if we're making those improvements that we need to make all of those sidewalks accessible. Ridgeway Estates is a perfect example of that. Yeah, as, so it, yeah, trees uprooting the sidewalks. Right, and it's, 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 it's everywhere you go on the side street. So actually, I had talked to the town administrator about making some, some funds available within my budget to replace some of those trees. Uh, you know, a lot of people like that sort of streetscape where there's some, some trees. I talked to um, Danielle McKnight about what the, the planning board's requirement does. So they have a requirement for street trees that are on private property, so they're off the back of the sidewalk, which I think is a much better scenario. Um, so we're going to see what we can do about providing, it'll be smaller, two and a half inch or three inch diameter new trees and replace some of the trees that we have to take out so that you don't lose that streetscape. But we're not adding a problem for, the, for a future sidewalk or for a future roadway. So with, um, so just to take a step back, again back to funding, we have, uh, you'll see there's a separate warrant article later uh, that was for 400,000, which was an addition, uh, was gonna be additional funding that brought us up to 1.5. Without that additional 400,000, we're gonna have to take one of the larger roads, which I think, with all my glasses, is either Anthony or Peter. Those are, the, those are the larger, more expensive streets in that neighborhood. Without that additional 400,000, we're gonna have to take one of those out from this year's paving and, and move it till next year. Just a clarification. So there was a separate project for that additional four hundred thousand dollars, but it's not a separate warrant article. It's actually it's in the capital improvement article as a separate line in the amount of four hundred thousand dollars. So if you looked at article, um, excuse me, if you looked in the warrant at article sixteen, fiscal year twenty twenty capital expenditures, you would see that there are two lines. One for an appropriation for roadway restoration in the amount of six hundred thousand dollars and a second for roadway restoration in the amount of four hundred thousand dollars. Those two total a million dollars to be combined with um, five hundred thousand dollars in chapter ninety money, which I talked about earlier, for a total of approximately one point five million dollars. But there isn't a separate one. All right, sorry. That's right. So that's essentially, uh, as far as, and again, the, the, the method out here, because these roads were on the bottom of the list, they're very poorly rated, uh, we're going to do what's called reclamation out there. So what we'll do is we'll have a machine that goes out and grinds the top layer of asphalt into the, the subsurface, grinds that out, then they, they use that as sort of a binding layer or a gravel layer. They'll relay that, and then we'll go over it with two layers of, uh, of new pavement. What, we'll, what we intend to do is, and what is customary, particularly when you're doing infrastructure work with these trenches, deep trenches that will settle, we'll do the binder course, which is um, the thicker layer of pavement which large, with larger aggregate in it. We'll do that this year. That'll give us the winter for that to settle out. All those trenches uh, will settle whatever they're going to do, they're going to do throughout the winter. Then we can address those trenches in the spring and then we'll finish <coughs> pave that next year. Very common uh, construction sequence. Uh, Mr. Brown, the, the trees that you had that like between the curb and the sidewalk, the little three foot stretch, yes. who's responsible for those trees? So they are in the right of way. So they, they are our responsibility. Okay. Yes. So town can decide what they want to do with those trees. Yes. Yes. Okay. But we try to you we know, want try to have to be citizen sensitive. input. Right. There are some very young trees out there that obviously, um, you know, someone may have 
planted to to uh, dress up their property, and we're sensitive to that. And it, it really, it does. Uh, it's a very stark look when you go and remove all the trees that people are used to seeing. As I talked to a resident who's very attached to these very beautiful maple trees he has up front, so we'll do the best we can. But when you give them the time and you explain to them, you know what we're obligated to do and what our requirements are, you know generally they're pretty understanding of that. So, yeah. So along with our paving, we do crack sealing. You may have seen them throughout town. They were uh, over by uh, the schools today. Um, this is also part of our annual uh, annual sort of paving program. And that's simply they, they apply a, a uh, asphalt product into the cracks um, throughout different roadways. This is a partial list. I met with the operations manager today. We added some, some roadways here to this list. Uh, this is this roadways that you've, uh, you've seen in past years and John and I are working to make sure that all of the streets that we've seen in past years and past presentations that we're fulfilling those promises. So the crack seals will, will be out um, uh, working on these streets throughout, you see them throughout town. What we typically like to do is, you know, crack sealing is more of a preventative maintenance. So what we'd like to do in the future is when we pave a street, you'll see cracking maybe the next year, it may take two or three years, and I think it's important to get out and crack seal those streets, and it's sort of counterintuitive, well, hey, we just paved that, but those cracks will appear within a year or two sometimes, and if you can address those cracks right away, you've, done, you've gone a long way to preserving that, that new roadway. So you'll see that in future years. You may see roadways that haven't been paved in several years, but you'll see some streets that have, have been paved in the last few years, just because I, I think that's good practice. We expect the, uh, the crack seals to be out relatively quickly. They, they work quickly and uh, they, they had a number of different crews going. They were on 62 on Saturday. They were here, yeah. We had three crews, yeah. I think, in on Saturday and they were, uh, they were moving like gangbusters. And this is the, uh, I mentioned the high school, middle school, east parks entrance roadway paving project. Again, this is that section of roadway that sort of was left in limbo after the, the various projects that were done. Uh, they have an icing problem out there in the winter time, so I met with the operations manager today and sp spoke with John in the past about uh, what we can do to address that. So we're going to address that. We expect the paving crew to want to just jump over to this project while they're on the Peter and Anthony project. So we'll get out there and do whatever drainage we need to address, and then um, we will uh, we'll, we'll have them pave that as part of the when they're out here for the Peter and Anthony project. Certainly. Again, completed to prior to the start of school. Gonzalez. I just want to um, say how thankful I am for that little project. I sit on the Housing Authority, and I approached Chairman Prisco at the time um, about what we could do about that. Sure. And he kind of took the ball and ran with that and right. um, got it done. So I'm just really grateful to see yeah. that happen. A lot of the seniors like to walk through there to go over right. the Ryers. And, so for a, stro a small stretch of roadway, it's gotten a lot of attention. I've heard quite a bit of it. You know, I've only I haven't been here a year yet, so I've heard quite a bit about that section of roadway. Very so happy, happy to, to get see it. it. As well. I, I think it's important to recognize that it's actually the secondary school building committee that's actually funding yeah, the project. Actually, yes, and, thank uh, you. So we brought that to your attention. And this is going to include fixing the sidewalk too, correct? Correct. Right. So we'll do the some drainage, sidewalk, and get it. You know, basically make it a brand new finished product right there. So then, what's on the schedule here? This is going to be under the management of Parks and Rec, but the town administrator asked me to include this. Uh, it is a relatively large paving project. So they had received funding last year to do paving around the rec center, and I, I took some liberties with those areas as far as the dimensions around the rec center um, in, in trying to make this presentation. They had funding for paving around the rec center as well as a portion of the walkways. They've, um, they've put in a request for the funding to pave the remainder of the walkways. See in that bottom section, um, the, the, the section of road uh, walkways traveling throughout Ipswich, Ipswich, Ipswich River Park. Um, so in the meantime, we've, again, we've, trained, we've changed uh, paving contractors. So, so they had received the price from the, the prior paving contractor. So we're gonna be working with the new paving contractor to develop a cost and a schedule. Again, I anticipate that uh, they're going to want to do this as part of when they're in town to do the other projects. And I know Parks and Rec is anxious to get at least the paving around the, the rec center done. Uh, it's currently it's just a gravel surface right now. And then they want to wait until they get the additional funding um, 
uh, after town meeting and then complete the walkway paving project as one contiguous project so there are no seams and they can just continue continue it all at once and have that that interruption just at one time so then uh, drainage analysis you may have seen upper realm street uh, on the radar in the past i know we've had a file here that i think had some some inquiries going going back quite a few years uh, the roadway surface is what people are, are most uh, anxious about uh, it's in considerably bad shape uh, part of the problem is uh, is the drainage out there so we went we took a look at that there are some uh, sort of scattered closed drainage system there there's also some wetlands that abut um, a portion of, of the roadway so what we've asked for is um, some funding to go out and do an engineering study, do some survey, and um, do some bid specs and look at the wetlands and what we're going to do need to do some for permitting. Uh, so we'll work with the engineering consultant start, starting right away, and uh, hopefully we can get um, you know get a bid package together, and uh, if necessary, if they find back, see it's very difficult to, to understand what exactly is going to need to be done. It may be that we can get away with a relatively small construction um, project that maybe we can handle in-house, or maybe we can have our, our current um, on-call person take care of, maybe handle that in-house, in which case we can get that binder course done this year and then finish pave the entire roadway in, in a future year, maybe next year. Uh, but if that project expands and becomes a, a larger construction project, if the, if the need for additional drainage is significant, then the project obviously expands. We just, we just don't know. We need to have that engineering analysis completed, so we'll, we'll get that done um, this summer. Hancock Street drainage improvement. Um, there's, there was, a, um, there was a, a construction project out there. Two, two homes were added on that roadway, and the roadway was paved in years past. Uh, with the addition of a new roadway, it, it, it contributed to some stormwater runoff to abutting properties. So we've met with the, a, one particular homeowner out there a number of times, uh, working with ways to alleviate that stormwater runoff. The town has done some work to sort of dam some runoff from, from the upgradient property. Uh, we, we added berm uh, at a driveway that accesses his property. So I actually was out there again today and, and talked to him again. We're going to continue to look at it with him, continue to work. We're going to... Um, install a new a driveway culvert. He, he accesses his driveway, or he accesses the rear of his property. He has some, um, some trailers back there. He's very active uh, on and off the property in that area. So we want to help him. The berm is essentially a smaller uh, bituminous curbing uh, that makes it difficult for him to access the, process, the property, but it maintains the stormwater runoff in the roadway. So we're going to work with him, maybe install a driveway culvert. Uh, but we'll do a, a, a larger uh, drainage analysis of that area and see what we can do to alleviate the stormwater runoff from going onto private property. There's a closed drainage system down at the bottom of the hill. This portion of Hancock Street uh, has a pretty significant gradient to it. So if we can, uh, worst case scenario is we can extend the closed drainage system and sort of capture that prior to the, uh, prior to the runoff leaving the roadway and getting onto private property. But as far as it's still going to remain primarily gravel, I'm sorry, which, which north, of Hancock, north of Dix, yes. North of Dix. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So we won't be... The, is, you're, not, you're not touching anything north the, the, of Dix. This is, no, we're not. No, I'm sorry. Yes, so the investigation will be from Dix downgrading into the closed drainage system. And that's where the, the, uh, the that, private property is that's having the concern. So. And just... Too bad. <laughs> for, for, the, for the board members, this is a project that we did in conjunction with the development of two house lots that are there with an interest of getting the water main expanded uh, up towards Dix Road and we hope ultimately up the length of Hancock Street, but uh, uh, it has not been with, you know, it's not come without challenges with regard to the impact of the, the runoff and, and we're trying to make a good faith effort to resolve the issues that, that uh, appear to potentially exist out there. Um, and I've asked the DPW director to look at it with the town engineer with the hopes that we can find something reasonable to uh, address any issues that might be going on. But it does not seek to expand the paved area north of Dix Road where it is right now. Yeah. <clears throat> so the Mount Vernon Street, um, pretty significant water main uh, project. Again, this is something that most people are, uh, are interested about because of the, the Poor, very poor paving. Uh, you may notice if you've been there recently that the highway department has been out there 
uh, addressing some of those sections. This was a, an area that it wasn't, there was potholes on top of potholes and pothole fixes on top of pothole fixes, which made it very difficult to get out there and actually um, complete a repair because there had been so many patches upon patches. So we took a very aggressive look this year. Uh, kudos to the highway department. They did a, they did a really great job of bringing a, a really, a really um, deteriorated roadway up to a, a, what I would consider a much, much better condition. But as far as the water main replacement goes, this is one of those one of those cases where we didn't want to go out, we didn't want to include this roadway in our paving program because we knew that we had a water main out there that needed attention. It's a 1940s vintage um, water main out there. Uh, we know that it's uh, subsurface conditions, very ledgy, so we're not sure about what the construction practices were when they installed this water main. But based on the number of breaks we had, it's you know, it's, it's likely that in, in some areas there's very poor bedding. But suffice to say, we need to get in there and replace. There's two sections of main. There's a six inch main and there's a, and an eight inch main. About two thirds of the roadway is the six inch. So we'd like to get in there, replace that section of main, replace all of the, the older services in the roadway, and then in following, in some following year, get out there and pave that. So get that into our annual paving program based on you know, it's difficult to anticipate right now what the, uh, the extent of the, the construction will be. So we'd like to get out right away and get a, get a, a engineer, cons engineering consultant involved. Bids and specs are certainly going to be necessary for this. Um, construction is going to be, uh, you know, two or three months out there at least. Likely will be a temporary water main. You see you, this is actually on North 28 Reading. You see there's a temporary water main that's top side of the roadway with connections. Well, likely that will likely be the means and methods. We'll have a temporary main while we remove and replace the older main uh, in 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 place. Um, so that's going to take significant time. So it'll be two or three months. I don't know if you have a question. So I have just a question from um, Mrs. Is Darty. Is this um, finished payment course in spring 2020? So yeah, so I was just I was just going to get to that. So if we can, if we can get out soon enough out to bid, it really hinges on what contractor avail. I'm sorry, no, no, I was right. So it really hinges on what contractor availability is. So if we can get our, out to bid and get a contractor that's willing to come in, we can potentially fit the the water main replacement in this season. Might be a little tight. Worst case is we will get out and get the construction done in the spring. In which case we can get to bind the course right away, potentially finish course the same year, but possibly go the next year, and then. But the best, the best case is we get it done this year, and we can finish pave next year. So that's what that last bullet is. So the best case is we get the construction done late this year, late fall, likely into November, uh, and then bind a course that, and then finish pave next year. And that was the extent of the projects I brought tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks, Pat. Anybody have any questions? No, just the Mount Vernon Street people in that area with the drive will be happy. Very happy. To know that yeah. at yeah. least it's uh, help is on the way. Help is on the way. Thanks for the treasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. All right, so uh, we are on to the. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for March. To, is that right? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. Are we moving this on? Thanks. We're skipping around, so. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> In the amount of four thousand four sixty-one fifty-nine. Have to read all of that. Second. Mm -hmm. One. Yep. One second. Yes. As follows: Copelman and Page. Uh, 16,459, Copeman and Page, 2,432, Thompson West, 425, for a total of 4,461.59. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. We skipped over liaison, <laughs> liaison assignments, which is number 15. <laughs> so. I, it's in the Dropbox, I believe, and I have I brought copies for everybody too, oh, as well. Um, do you want to just take one and pass it along? Share file or Dropbox? Oh, I think it's in Share File. Yes, 
Mr. Gilberto, are the liaison assignments in, in um, share file? I'm kidding. They're in the meeting folder for this evening in share <laughs> file as a separate document. All right. And should we run them down, or are you all going to look at them on your own time? Or know. does anyone have any questions? I would just have one question. Um, uh, is it okay for me to still go to CPC meetings, even though I'm not a liaison? In there. Good. Yeah. Post meetings. Any yeah. meeting you want. Okay. Just want to be sure because <laughs> it's already heating up with Heffron and everything else like that. So um, I, I know I'll spend some time there. Sure. That's the biggest thing. Sure. And this will be, it's typically found on the website in the board, the board's, um, in the board's uh, section, right, Mr. Gilberto? I believe we post the liaison assignments under the select board's page in addition to putting it in the Dropbox, uh, excuse me, share file folder. There's a separate folder that it's not in yet. It was subject to review at tonight's meeting, but we'll move it into the board liaison assignments folder, which is also in share file. All right. So let us go back to... Um, I just skipped over board member reports, but we'll do board meeting schedule next. We're skipping all over the place tonight, so let's move on to number 17. So I think in the packet you did give some proposed we, meeting dates? We did, through you, Madam Chair. We did take our best attempt at a proposed meeting schedule based on um, the work at hand, the October town meeting, et cetera, and what we came up with is a list of meetings so the board's next meeting would be on Monday, June 10th. That is the evening of June Town Meeting. June Town Meeting is scheduled to begin at 7 o'clock p.m. The board would likely be meeting at 6 o'clock p.m. that evening, and we traditionally meet in the high school principal's conference room. That would be at, I expect that to be at 6 o'clock that evening. The following Monday, October, excuse me, June 17th, would be a regular board meeting. Um, We'd conduct the water rate hearing at that meeting, and our custom has been to conduct that hearing shortly after a town meeting. That's the next opportunity. And then looking at the, the way the calendar falls and the timing of the 4th of July holiday, we're proposing a meeting on Monday, July 15th. So no meeting on the 1st. That would mean that there would not be a meeting on Monday, July 1st. That's correct. July 15th. And then following in the board's uh, approach to the meeting schedule last summer, we scheduled a, the next meeting in August, so one meeting each in July and August. We selected August 19th because it coincides with the deadline for October town meeting warrant article submission. So that evening you'll know all of the articles that have been submitted for October town, town meeting. <coughs> And then just factoring the Labor Day holiday, the next meeting would be Monday, September 9th, and you would be asked to sign the October Town Meeting Warrant that evening, and we'd get back into the regular cycle of every other, of uh, the first and third Mondays, with a meeting occurring on September 23rd for warrant article informational hearings, and then town meeting would occur on Monday, October 7th. The board would, of course, meet that night. Madam Chair, are we on summer dress starting on June 17th. Aren't you already on summer dress? Oh, I'm just kidding. So, yes, we do a little bit more relaxed dress code for those who choose to not wear your gowns to the Golf meeting. shirts. <laughs> Golf shirt season. Okay, golf yeah. shirt. Any questions? Uh, is, are all the members available? Or does that schedule um, work for everybody? Who knows? I'm yeah, <laughs> I know. I haven't been told. I have to check September with my social July. director. <laughs> I'll be driving back from New Jersey, so okay. I'll do my best. Yeah. All right. I'm good all the way around. We're good. Okay. And the 21st of October, I will be here. It's just a long way to go. All right. So moving along to the town administrator's report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Some of this is left over from the last meeting when I waived the reading of the report, or some of it. 
I provided a copy of a certificate of recognition that the community impact team presented to the board for its five years of support of the Youth Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition. I also um, referenced, but I don't think I actually attached the actual letter, um, Representative Brad Jones identified funding, which I think we talked about in the last board meeting, in the amount of $75,000 for a police department simulator, as well as $75,000 for the school department's one-to-one -one device initiative. If they were funded in the final budget, the police department capital request could be uh, offset. Um, the school department's uh, request would be in addition to the funding that um, Representative Jones is seeking. We put some additional information relative to the proposed 20 Elm Street Chapter 40B project up on the website, including information regarding wetland delineation that was submitted to the Conservation Commission now three weeks ago. Um, I just would refer folks to the statement that we put out last week relative to the project um, and um, a meeting that took place on Monday, May 13th. I'm not going to read the statement here, but it is up on the town website. Just for residents who are paying attention and interested in uh, alternatives for disposing of waste, household hazardous, excuse me, household waste collection day, not hazardous waste collection day, will be held on Saturday, June 8th from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock noon. This will be for special items, paper and rigid plastic, and flyers are attached to my report. Hazardous waste collection scheduled to take place in November. DPW completed street sweeping on the main roads, as the DPW director indicated. A neighborhood schedule will be will be uh, proposed and posted uh, in conjunction with the contractor over the next few weeks. Um, the DPW director did mention that there is a tree removal required with the Peter and Anthony Road paving project and there will be a hearing scheduled in the next few weeks with regard to that. I am pleased to announce the appointment of Brian Latendre and James Casaletto as firefighters in the fire department and I included uh, information relative to their appointment in uh, with my report and I want to thank uh, Select Board Member Gonzalez for joining us that morning for their swearing in. Thank you, Leanne. Very welcome. And finally, I'm pleased to announce that in their review of $2.7 million in general obligation municipal purpose bonds and $7.2 million in bond anticipation notes, Moody's has affirmed that the town's AA2 credit rating. The, a the AA2 rating reflects a moderately sized tax base with above average resident wealth and income a very stable financial position with growing reserves and above average debt burden with manageable pension liability. Again, another testament to um, the board and the financial planning team's efforts to manage the town's finances and um, we uh, certainly appreciate the positive feedback from the bond rating agency. Um, and with that, that concludes my report. Thank you, Madam Chair. Questions? Any members have any questions? Not on that. Just a question to the administration, just so the status of uh, the subdividing and uh, disposition of Mill Street property. Uh, yes, uh, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, we do have a uh, proposal that uh, came back from Hancock Associates that proposes to draw the, so the, draw the property lines in accordance with what our desires are. That's something that we'll need some feedback from a number of folks, including representatives of the, uh, the Board of Appeals. And uh, we expect to have a meeting with uh, that working group shortly for potential action. I just drove by that. I was wondering what we're doing with that. Yeah. yeah. We did, we've got the report back recently. We've looked, kind of batted it around and we're ready to members, do it. This is the piece of property that we purchased on Mill Street for the location of a uh, water pumping station for yeah. water to yeah. anticipate to join uh, in with Reading and the NWRA. So we were fortunate to be able to secure the property, but now we don't have a compelling need for all of it. So what uh, the board previous uh, or decided was to uh, retain some of the upland for future municipal use needed since we own it now, uh, subdivide it and sell the house off. So we'll recoup some of our- And it wouldn't affect the character of the lot. It will, It'll still be a perfectly it will, fine single family affect the home. character of the lot of the neighborhood. And again, the town will be able to retain a portion of it for whatever future where, need may be. Where is that? Mill, Mill Street. Street. Mill Street. You know where Mill Street is? At Park Street heading down towards Crocker Street. Mill Street is on your left, not a road, Mill Street. And just before you get to the Ipswich River, uh, at the Reading line. Last house in North Reading. Uh, last house on the left. Because oh. yeah. it was a town line for the water. So, uh, but we purchased it a couple of years ago. Uh, next to the historical bridge. Yeah, next to the historical <laughs> Reading Bridge, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so we, we were fortunate to be able to get it, because at, at that particular point in time, we were heading to the MWRA, and we yeah. needed a site for it. It was a perfect location. First piece of property in North Reading. 
that we don't need it, per se, or all of it. Anyone else have any questions for the town administrator? Mr. Gilberto. I do not have a question for myself, but I do have one other <laughs> item that I would like to just make the board aware of, which is that the uh, Reading North Reading Chamber of Commerce has asked me uh, to provide an update relative to matters ongoing in the town, and I'll be doing so on Thursday, May 30th, beginning at 11.30 a.m. at the Horseshoe Grill. So board members are certainly welcome to, uh, to attend if they so choose. Thank you, Mr. Thank Gilberto. You. We'll move on to Selectman's reports and all the new business all at once. So, Mr. O'Leary, would you like to start us off? Sure. Um, first of all, you know, I'd like to mention the passing of uh, Charlie Jones. And uh, I don't know if you have a new Charlie. Okay. I said, did, did you think yeah, uh, Charlie was a, uh, an educator in the town of North Reading for probably 40 plus years. He was a, primarily a history teacher who became principal, vice principal. Um, mentor to hundreds if not thousands of students here in North Reading and uh, famously well known for his uh, cross country trips taking all the kids uh, I mean a generation of kids across country uh, during the summer months and uh, really uh, became a true friend to literally thousands of people and mentors to thousands of students here in North Reading and Charlie passed away um, after a battle with uh, terrible disease. But um, we're certainly grateful for Charlie's uh, services to the community. And again, it was recognized just a couple of years ago when we named a portion of the, the new school after him, which was great and a wonderful honor, which I knew he enjoyed and really appreciated. Uh, but to, uh, you know, to Claudia, uh, his wife and his family, uh, our condolences. And again, uh, we're a far better community for, for Charlie Jones having been here and spent his career here. So it's unfortunate that he passed away. And just on a uh, subcommittee note, um, I already asked about the subdivision, but it, we continue to work for finding a location for our uh, chlorination treatment facility on uh, 28 in relation to uh, the water project with Andover. Uh, in order to complete the FEIR, we need to you know, have this location. Um, we're still in discussions with a couple of property owners, and we have two more potential property owners who are willing to sit down and discuss uh, potential locations on Northern Main Street uh, in the next week or so. So. Uh, continue to make some progress here we had hoped that we would have it nailed down by now but you know every once in a while we have a uh, little rink of the plans but still progressing still moving forward and uh, appreciate uh, these other two property owners willing to sit down and discuss the possibilities with us so that's positive other than that i'll send that chair thank you mr walmer um i just had the occasion to go to the cpc meeting uh, recently it was a combined cpc and edc meeting um, and Mr. Heffron was down here to talk about his um, ideas for what he can do with his property concerning our town center. Um, I've known Mr. Heffron for about two years now, and it was a very uh, collegial uh, discussion. Um, he would really like to, to work with the town to um, create some sort of legacy project um, that the town could take advantage of, and he's looking for direction from us. The CPC received it very well, and the suggestion was made that I had made two years ago, which is that at some point we need to create a task force where people from CPC, EDC, potentially from the select board, where we can uh, start to really examine this in a, in a orderly fashion and start to um, take this these type of that type of area of development quite seriously. The surveys, I mean, we'll see it in the strategic plan, but we'll also see it, you know, when they give a formal presentation about that. But um, you know, the town has been very supportive based on the 600 respondents we've had to doing some sort of mixed use development in that area, creating a downtown. And uh, it was, uh, again, it's uh, everything I think we've all thought about and it's, you know, it's kind of coming to us, which is really nice. But we have to be able to, we have to be able to be responsive. And uh, so I think actually the select board needs to take, you know, needs to understand it, but then at some point affirm what we're hearing from people and support it as well, if we agree with it. So that's, I think, that's the most important thing we want. Mm. Anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Thank you. That's a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> Mr. Schultz. Uh, again, I just want to congratulate my colleagues to the left and right of me here for joining the jungle here. Welcome aboard. Um, one thing I want to speak out, the, the Healthy Kids Running Series at IRP, I had never seen such a turnout. They had probably, I don't know, hundreds of kids 
doing all different size races for all different size ages. The little guys were going maybe 100 yards. The big ones were running around the hole. It was really an amazing uh, process, and I just want to thank the folks. That it's too many, I think our youth spends too much time on screens and iPhones these days, and it's good to see them out running. And it's, it was a nice project. I happened to stumble on it one day I was in the park, and I was amazed at the turnout. So it's one. It was, I know some, uh, Matt Quinlan was involved. Um, I'm not sure who actually was the behind it, but it was literally hundreds of kids doing physical activity on a weekend day, which you don't see anymore. So yeah. that was a really nice program, and I thank them for doing it. That's all. Is it Gonzalez? Anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then I will I make a motion. Cool. Uh, <laughs> you, I have to have a turn. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I just want to remind people that Memorial Day is coming up. And it's a day that we are keep in remembrance and honor of our service members who have um, died in fighting, fighting for us. And Mr. Walner is going to be bringing the greetings of the board. And there should be information about where people can attend the services um, posted somewhere for, and if you want Mr. Gilbert, if you have any information on that. I'm happy to please. review. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Thank you, Madam Chair, for, for bringing it to my attention that we did not have it posted up on the website. Um, so for those who are interested, uh, there is an assembly that begins at Riverside Cemetery at 645 on the morning of Memorial Day with a, a ceremony at Riverside Cemetery at 7, Harmony of Ale Cemetery at 745. Ipswich River Park Blue Star Memorial at 8.30, and then at the Park Street Cemetery at 8.45. Um, that's followed by the Memorial Day Parade, which gathers beginning at 9.30 um, at the top of the common, leaving the common promptly at 10 o'clock. And that is followed by the uh, actual um, ceremonies themselves on the common, weather permitting, beginning at 11 o'clock a.m. on Monday morning. And so for any of the members that are going to be here or end up being here and want to march in the parade, right, we, there'll be a contingency that usually what marches together. So right behind that old car. People in the Mount Vernon Street area will be welcoming us with open arms. And <laughs> they already said they Telling us to trip. watch out. <laughs> you know. I think I brought umbrellas last year. and you know, But it, it's a nice town event, and you don't have to people can come to watch the parade or come to watch the, the speakers or go to the cemetery and not do any of the other things. It's just nice events scheduled to be able to remember the day and remember um, our service members. And then I just want to make another service reminder about that, that North Reading Food Pantry fund drive. And they, they have a GoFundMe page and it's their, their capital fund drive because the um, union Congregational gave them space, so they want to convert the space to be their new location. So they have this uh, page online, it's at www.gofundme.com slash NRFP Home Fund, or you can mail your donations to P.O. Box 626 North Reading, Mass. 01864. And that's it. And welcoming the our two board members again. We look forward to working with you. And <laughs> Mr. Gilberto has another question, the, the, comment. The, the TA report that won't end this evening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and another Poor thing. Jane's and over there, another right? thing. I know. Uh, <laughs> um, I do want to make the board aware that the uh, I received a call from. Uh, Ms. Imbriano of the school committee asking if I'd be willing to participate on the search committee for superintendent of schools. Um, and just to make sure that everything was in order, I did consult with town council to make sure that there wasn't any conflict with me participating in my role as town administrator, given that I do have a, one child and will soon have a second child in the public schools and he opined that there was not a conflict to, from that standpoint. So uh, I am intending to participate <coughs> in um, in that search committee's work. They do have an aggressive timeline where they're looking to have candidates uh, forwarded to the school committee, I believe, by the end of June. Um, there was a meeting scheduled this evening. The meeting needs to be rescheduled to next uh, Tuesday, but the hope is to try to maintain the timeline from what I understand. And uh, I'll do my best to keep the board um, up to date, you know, given, uh, you know, well understanding the, the fact that there aren't going to be many meetings of this board during that time because of the town meeting and otherwise. But, um, I, I will be participating and uh, I look forward to the process. That'll be great. That's great. Yeah. 
I think that they, they, I don't know if they're still looking for them, but they did send out a request for They're all, they picked the people. Volunteers, yeah. 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 I know, I just know Miss Eric Evans is going to be serving yes. on the search committee. So Correct. anyone that stepped forward to serve, I think that's wonderful. And I think it works out better that you have kids in the school systems, you know, because mm -hmm. you, you know what the, what's going on there and you know what they're going through. And that doesn't mean people that don't should be eliminated, of course. They can participate just as well, but sure. I, think it, I think it's good. All right, so with that, motion, motion to adjourn. adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? <laughs> Do you need That's a second? Really. Oh, my word. 10.20. I just lost my bet. <laughs> <laughs>